quarterback John Elway faces a giant task today as he tries to elude a punishing posse of New York defenders led by outside linebackers number 58 Carl Banks, number 56 Lawrence Taylor that have stopped opposing quarterbacks in three consecutive games. Danny White, Ron Jaworski, Tommy Kramer all KO'd. Meanwhile, Giants veteran quarterback Phil Simms will be the target of Denver's destroyers. Number 77, Carl Mecklenburg, and number 75, Rulon Jones. Between them, they have 21 sacks this year. The defensive traps are set. The Broncos and the Giants. One will escape today with a 10-2 record. Broadcasting Company presents the National Football League. Today from Giant Stadium, it's the first place Denver Broncos and the first place New York Giants. Today's action brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda value. By Bud Light, everything else is just a light. And by Harris Corporation and their Lanier Business Product Divisions. Lanier, we're easy to use. Stadium sold out on this November afternoon, 76,000 plus at East Rutherford, New Jersey, to see two quality teams, the Denver Broncos and the New York Giants. Hello, everyone. Dick Kenberg with Merlin Olson. Boy, it's great this time of the year. Five games to go to have it boil down to two teams. Well, at least their fans feel these are two Super Bowl candidates. The Denver Broncos, their lead has shrunk in the West to one game over the Raiders. They're nine and two are the Broncos and the New York Giants in a dogfight with Dallas and, of course, with Washington. Dick, I think neither of these teams would be 9-2 and two without great performance by the defense. The backbone of both of these teams, a powerful and crushing defense. But you favor the Giants. Why? I think the Giants have two big things going for them today. First, the fact that they're on their home turf. This is their stadium and their crowd. I think if this game were being played in Denver, they would probably be favored today. The other thing they have going for them is a better balance on offense. And you tip that balance in favor of number 20, Joe Morris. That great little running back who is number two in the NFL. Morris and the Morris family all a bubble over Jamie Morris, the younger brother at the University of Michigan. Over 200 yards rushing yesterday for the Wolverines to lead Michigan to the Rose Bowl. John Elway, tremendous start for the Broncos. And still a plus six touchdowns over interceptions, but in the last five games, Elway has been cold. Only two touchdown passes, five have been intercepted. On the other side of the field, Phil Simms with the unenviable task of matching up with the NFL's most sophisticated defense. They have been known to throw as many as 50 looks at you in a single game. The hometown Giants will get the ball first. Rich Carlos signals he's ready. Miller, Phil McConkey at the other end for the Giants. At the eight. And McConkey is drilled at the 26 yard line. Carl Mecklenburg, and we're going to feature the defenses because they've been prominent this year. In fact, between them, they're only four yards of part in allowing rushing and passing yards. Rulon Jones, Greg Craig, and Andre Townsend, the front three. Ryan and Mecklenburg, Hunley and Jackson, the veteran Jackson, outside linebacker in the back four. Louis Wright and Mike Harden. Harden has three touchdowns this year. Dennis Smith and Steve Foley. Foley, the all-time Bronco interception artist. Maurice Carthen is hit in the backfield by Louis Wright at the 21-yard line. So they go away from Morris to Carthen, figuring the Broncos might be uh, zeroing in on number 20, Joe Morris, but Louis Wright not fooled a bit. Here is the offense for the Giants, led by Phil Sims out of Moorhead State of Kentucky. Joe Morris, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons. Never been done by a Giant. Carthen joins him in the backfield. Bobby Johnson, Stacy Robinson are the wideouts with Mark Bavaro, the tight end, and there's the offensive line. Second down and 15. Morris gets away from 
Mecklenburg and ducks out to the 29-yard line where it will be third down and about eight. Dick, we'll see a lot of jumping around today by the Denver defense. Not only will they show you a lot of different fronts, but very often, just as the quarterback is audibling, they will jump back and forth, trying to create confusion, trying to create some hesitation on the part of that offense. Rulon Jones, one of the key figures. He's moved from left side to right side where he and Mecklenburg are lined up. Usually they are paired on the left side of the line. This time they attack from the right. Sims... Running room. He's going to be close, but might have been hit shy of the first down. Chasing the play was Rulon Jones. He gets a favorable mark. That's going to be very close to first down yardage. Simon Fletcher, number 73. Credited with the initial hit. We're going to see both quarterbacks running because one of the things that both of these teams do very effectively is to pressure the quarterback. And any time that quarterback begins to run, you know that there might be an ugly collision at the other end of it. Either fourth down and short, or the Giants get another three downs on Sim Scramble. Mr. Foley in our view. And it is short, apparently, by about one link of the chain. Well, an interesting option. I don't think... I don't think Parcells is going to gamble, or is he? No, no. He is a conservative coach by nature. You saw the mark there, how close it was. And if anything, Parcells will play the odds. That's one thing that, that he believes in, and his team is typified by that. A very conservative, offensive, and defensive style. Sean Landetta, 45.3 average. Second only to Stark in the National Football League, and he's second in net as well to the Colts kicker. Had a 70-yard touchdown return against Kansas City last Sunday. He stands way back in respect to Landetta's power inside the 20. A lot of adjustments on both lines as Denver winds up with 10 men on the line of scrimmage. to seven 20 and out to the 23 and he had a couple of blockers ahead as Gerald Wilhite finally dragged down by Robbie Jones a 58 yard punt and a 21 yard return Lendetta out kicking his coverage on that play and there was just one man between between Wilhite and open spaces George Martin, Jim Bird, and Leonard Marshall, the front three of the Giants, and these big, strong, tough linebackers, Banks, Reason, Carson, and the all-pro Lawrence Taylor. Mark Collins gets to start the rookie at one corner with Perry Williams at the other. Hill and Kennard, the safeties. Elway dumps it off incomplete to Sammy Winder. Carl Banks out there to cover. Offensively, Elway has Winder and Wilhite in the backfield. You know Steve Sewell is injured, may not make it back to the playoffs. Vance Johnson, very fast. And Steve Watson, the possession-type receiver. Clarence Kay, a blocking tight end, number 88, back after a one-week suspension. Dave Studdard, Keith Bishop, Bill Bryan, Paul Howard, Ken Lanier, the front line. Three of those five on the injured list this week, Dick. Screen to Winder. But when you throw a screen that high in the air, you know it's doomed. It has to be a little quicker than that. And Perry Williams, number 23 at the corner, matched the 23 of Winder, the receiver, and it's a one-yard loss. Talking to Mike Shanahan, who helps coordinate that offense for the Denver Broncos, he said the thing you don't want to do against the New York Giant defense is get yourself in that long yardage, must-pass situation. And there they've done it immediately on their first opportunity with the football. Well, the first two passes both went into the left flat. That's Lawrence Taylor's side of the field, perhaps anticipating Taylor on the rush, trying to throw over him. Elway guns the ball, and what a catch by number 80, Mark Jackson, the rookie from Purdue, and a first down at the 42. Jackson barely had turned his head to see the ball and snared his 23rd of the year. We'll talk many times today about Elway's arm strength. 
without that great arm, he probably could not have completed this pass. Jackson turning into coverage. Elway doesn't care. Three Giants, but that ball thrown so accurately and so powerfully that none of them had a chance to react to it. The initial first down of the game at the Denver 43. Just underway, the Giants at 9-2, and, and the Broncos 9-2. and two. Winder into the teeth of that blue jersey defense earns a couple. George Martin and company there. This is Joe Morris that we're watching. Working on his hand, it looks like. Perhaps the fingernail, or perhaps the... That's not good news. No, contact lenses. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, all right. The mirror was the giveaway. There, we got it. They look like his hands were working under that towel. Second down and eight. Center screen to Winder. Good block, 50. And he has what appears to be a first down at the 46 of the Giants before Lawrence Taylor, 56. And 58, Carl Banks can bring him down. This is the kind of play that the Broncos love to throw at you. Just a little dinker out of the backfield, but it'll drive you crazy. The Giants defense dropping deep. Will Height, or not Will Height, but uh, Sammy Winder just takes that ball in, and of course, that's like a handoff. Only he doesn't have to cope with the defensive line. He's already beyond them. Fifty-eight resembles Lawrence Taylor in size, 6'4", 235. He's very fast, living up to his number one draft status out of Michigan State a couple of years ago. It was his punishing hit on Danny White that put White out with a fractured wrist. First look at other scores. Cincinnati ahead early. Pittsburgh leading 7-0. Uh, safety for the Patriots against Buffalo. Second and long. Elway. He slides in at the 49-yard line. Just got away from Lawrence Taylor right on his heels. This is the kind of pursuit, the kind of punishing pursuit, that Elway will run from all day long. Lawrence Taylor, no linebacker in the league, comes harder and faster after the quarterbacks than Taylor. Well, the man who played in the Yankee chain at Oneonta is using that fadeaway slide. When you go against an aggressive defense like theirs, Trick is trying to keep them guessing. When am I going to be running to be running or running to be passing? Well, he was running that time for his First life. life. <laughs> no question about it. Down the middle, complete again, and a first down at the 34-yard line. Again, it's little Mark Jackson, the 5'9 wide receiver, who was the top target of Jim Everett with the Purdue Boilermakers last year. And, of course, we saw Everett last week uh, debuting as a Los Angeles Ram very impressively. Jackson got his opportunities earlier in the year when Vance Johnson went down with an injury and has really been a pleasant surprise. The Broncos now able to put both Johnson and Jackson into the lineup and give you great outside speed in two positions. Well, you saw the good concentration of Jackson. He actually caught the back end of the ball. On first down, complete to Steve Watson. They've not been able to find Watson the last three games. He had only one catch in the last three outings. Makes a good reception there, 11 yards, and another first down in front of Perry Williams. I asked Dan Reeves about Steve Watson. I said, what's happened to Watson? He's kind of disappeared. He said, that's our fault. We're not getting things done offensively. Well, in this first drive after a shaky start, Elway using that gun of his to equalize things with this New York Giant defense. 7.45 remaining in the opening quarter. An impressive drive led by Elway's arm. That's Mobley, the tight end. Give inside the winder for short yardage. Jerry Carson tripped him up right at the line of scrimmage. You saw they kept Mobley in the tight end, anticipating Lawrence Taylor's presence. And Mobley was looking for number 56. Actually got a chance to get a little bump on Marshall as Marshall shot to the inside. But I tell you, they, the thing that's tough about that giant front wall is not only are they big, 
but they have great speed all along that front as well. No gain, second and ten. Elway throws that one out of bounds. Clarence K, the nearest white jersey. One of the Giants leaning forward, but no flag. Able to get back. Marshall out of his stance, but those giant defensive ends, Dick, play about a half a yard off the ball. And that meant that when he started forward, he didn't get into the area of encroachment. Elway sends Watson left and Jackson right. Sampson split left and will hide in the slot left. Elway's five for six in the drive. And can't find Vance Johnson, broken up nicely by Elvis Patterson. And the field goal unit, Rich Carlos, comes on. Patterson one-on-one -on, -one on Vance Johnson, and that pass cut off short of what could have been a first down. Even if he had caught this football, I don't think they would have come up with the first down. You can see the velocity on that football. Elway is not an easy quarterback to catch. He's a test for those receivers. It'll be between 40 and 41 yards for Carlos, who has missed only four of 14 this year. Kubiak to hold. And the Broncos take the lead on a 40-yard field goal by Rich Carlos. Timeout, six minutes and 46 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. A long drive led by Elway. Broncos come away with the lead. He's been a terror. Lawrence Taylor and leads the NFL in sacks this year with 16 and a half. That is a giant record, but we must remind you that they've only been keeping official sack statistics for a few years. If you want to go back a few years, you can uh, find that Jim Cat Cabbage of the Giants back in the 60s had 25 sacks in a 14 game season. But those were unofficial in those days. the 23-yard line on a solid hit by Darren Como. Como, the leading special teams player of these Denver Broncos. That was a pure knockdown. Como out of Arizona State. And the Sun Devils on their way to the Rose Bowl against the University of Michigan. You never want to pick at a successful drive. The Broncos able to put three points on the board, but they have not been able to run. And I don't know if you can make a living all day long against this giant defense throwing the football exclusively. And you feel that the Giants will be able to run with Morris, and they'll probably test right now. And here he comes. Little Joe wrapped up around the ankles after a gain of a couple. Morris who played at Syracuse, broke all the rushing records of Larry Zonka, Floyd Little, Ernie Davis, and Jim Brown. Only 5'7", 195. He gets it again. Whoops. Whoops down and picking up only about a half yard or so. There to secure the tackle was Carl Mecklenburg, number 77. No huddle. They're quick counting it on the line of scrimmage, trying to keep Denver from getting back into that defensive huddle, Dick. So Phil Sims in a hurry up offense in essence. Third down pass. Over the middle, wide open Bavaro. And the tight end has a first down at the 41 yard line. 15 yards. They're saying go right back to the line. What they're thinking is here is they're going to try and keep Denver from substituting defensively, make them call their defenses audibly, try and take their defensive package away from them. Broncos would like to use a lot of different sets, and the Giants trying to keep them at least with the same 11 men on the field. Joe Morris dragged down, Tom Jackson, 57, and Ricky Hundley. And Jackson, a spirited defender, has to be helped away. Collier quickly signaling in defenses from the sideline, but Collier likes to use 20 defensive players in rotation. Can't get them on and off the field when a quick count, quick signals in, the, in effect. Morris again. To the 46-yard line. Again, a four or five. Ricky Hundley with a tackle. It's short of the first down by about four yards. And there, very quickly, Collier ordinarily will wait until the uh, signals come into the quarterback, but not so here. We talk about action. About 10 seconds between plays. Sims says, someone get open. And out of bounds he goes. 
Ruth, and I believe he has a first down at the Denver 49. He needed five, and he's right at five. Man-to-man -man coverage down the field, and Sims is waving his receiver. said, make that man decide. Either I'll run for it, or you get open, and I'll throw it to you. Right now, you're going to wonder, well, he is looking to the sideline. I've got to believe they had scripted some of the early plays. There's your giant defense. Bill Belichick going over things with his linebackers and his secondary. But the key now is the offense and the fact you're right, Merlin. It'll be interesting to see how long they can go with that no huddle. i got to tell you, you're going to get tired at this rate. Both teams, <laughs> offense and defense. Now the scramble by Sims enough for the first down. That's Rusan in motion. Sims dumps it off to O.J. Anderson, and he's to the 46-yard line on the slip. Anderson <laughs> acquired from the St. Louis Cardinals. Well, it looks like they're finally going to huddle. Maybe we'll have a chance for a 10-minute ticker. Cincinnati leading Minnesota 7-3 in the first, and the Steelers take the 7-0 lead against the Browns. Indianapolis, an early field goal, and Detroit leading Tampa 7-0. Jeff Hostetler, number 15, the third-string quarterback, is the man closest to you, a wide receiver left. And that's Rusan struggling to get back to the 45-yard line, a one-yard gain. Hostetler from West Virginia. Now, they may be setting up something here, using him wide. Maybe they'll bring him back and have a double pass here. Either that or just throw it out to him and let him throw the double pass. Anytime a second quarterback is in there, you've got to ask that question, why is he there? Dick, that on that last play, Rusin slipped on the play. That's twice that giant backs have slipped on this artificial turf and fallen of their own accord. Another third down, and Sims has converted two on this drive. One with a pass, one by a scramble. who has caught more passes than any running back in NFL history. And he did have a step, but a tough throw for Sims. He had to lay that one up, and it was just a bit long. Well, Galbraith had worked his way, a step in the open, but a tough throw. down and the Giants with Hostetler under center and Landetta the putter in motion look at this and they give to Rusan and he has a first down oh my is going to say, hey, you're taking your pages right out of my book. There's Roussan heading upfield and a gutsy call as he picks up the first down, but you're in an area of the field where you're not going to lose that much. That's, again, a vote of confidence for Bill Parcell's defense. Now, they've made two third down conversions and a fourth down conversion on this drive. 3-0 Denver, 229 left in the opening quarter. Complete down to the 26-yard line as Sims goes to Carthen, his fullback. Carthen, who was a blocker for Herschel Walker, carried the ball pretty well himself on this field for the New Jersey Generals of the USFL. Played his college ball at Arkansas State. Have to kind of chuckle. Bill Parcells yesterday said that this Denver team kind of reminded him of a Canadian football team. All those tricks. And here he is with the package opened up today. <laughs> that did look like a CFL play, didn't sure it? Sure did. That, that play out of fun formation or in a fun situation. Sims. To Morris. It's a first down at the Denver 15-yard line. has been an intriguing drive by the Giants. Interesting drive, and you have to kind of feel that by going as they did without the snap count, they kind of got this Denver defense out of sequence. They've got things moving in their direction. Nice play by Morris as he comes back in front of Steve Foley, number 43, to take that pass and pick up the first down. Little 
little Joe, but he's just short Joe. He's hardly a little man. He's 5'7", so doesn't have the height, but he has 195 pounds. So if you put that kind of body form on a six-footer, he'd be about a 220-pound running back. I have to tell you something else about his running style. Has great vision and good acceleration, patience, the kinds of things you like out of a running back, and that low center of gravity and good leg power make him extremely difficult to tackle. That kid brother, Jamie, at the University of Michigan, a junior running back, who looks like a, out of the same mold. Morris again, tripped up on a good play by Ricky Hunley, who had knife through from his linebacker spot. Got an early piece of it. There you see the wholesale changes. Four players in and four off for Joe Collier. Five off and five in for Collier's defense. That's what the Giants were trying to deny him doing in that early part of this drive. Look at Collier. <laughs> animated with all those signals. <laughs> he's, he, no, he's not excited, folks. Those are his defensive signals going in to his team on the field. He could win a cheerleading scholarship at the University of Colorado. And it's Hundley again. No, this time 90, Freddie Gilbert from Freddie the Gilbert. University of Georgia, who comes in as one of those nickel defenders. He's in there predominantly as a pass rusher and I think was blitzing across, thinking pass all the way, but was quick enough. There on the left side of your screen, number 90, look at him sneaking inside. He got in clean and was quick enough to get across and grab Joe Morris before he could get started. And that play ends the first quarter. So when we come back, it'll be Raul Alegre. They're very happy with a man from the University of Texas trying to tie it up for the Giants. But that's the end of the first period here at Giants Stadium in East Rutherford. We always enjoy being able to honor one of our own, and the Sportscasters Association did that for us last Tuesday here in New York as Dick Enberg, my partner, was honored again as America's outstanding sportscaster. Dick, I know I can tell you on behalf of all of those at NBC that work with you from Art Watson through Mike Weissman, right on down through the whole team, how proud we are of you. Well, it's, uh, it's a team win. Here goes the field goal try by Allegre to start the second quarter, and the Giants have tied it up at three all. 31 yards for Allegre. And with that, this is what's really important in our lives. We have a commercial break. <laughs> it's tied at three all, early second quarter. Well, small colleges have produced the two quarterbacks in the Big Apple and both very successful. Moorhead State, Kentucky sent Phil Sims to the Giants and UC Davis, Ken O'Brien to the Jets who are 10 and 1 and ready to meet the Dolphins down in Miami tomorrow night. Allegra to kick, Bell on the far side and Lang near side for Denver. Three all. Good deep kick. Lang, oh, he's going to take it out. That's quite a gamble. At the seven-yard line, Solomon Miller got him. So Denver will start deep in its own end. A hesitation by Lang and a gamble that was not warranted. Simply a mistake. I think the whole Denver return team assumed that he was going to stay in there. In fact, you saw players letting up. Lang, who has been hurt for part of the season, simply made the bad choice. Giant crowd comes to life. Elway, a safety valve to his tight end, Mobley. George Martin, number 75, made the tackle. Make that Clarence K. The tight end who has a reception for two yards. Dan Reeves, I'm sure, talking to Elway about not throwing the interception, uh, not making the mistake. There's the rushing I talked to you about. So far, a negative rushing yardage for the Broncos. The Giants not with a spectacular game, but better balance. Pretty even. Pretty darn even, as a matter of fact. But so much pressure on this man, Elway. Screen. Winder fighting his way across the 20-yard line. Gary Reasons, 55, finally dragging him down. First down Denver here in East Rutherford. Let's go to NFL 86 and Ahmad Rashad. 
All right, in New England, the Patriots' Craig James takes it four yards here for the score. New England leads 9-0 in the first quarter against the Bills, who have lost 21 straight on the road. All right, Ahmad, three all here. Denver digging its way out of the shadows at its own end with the first down at the 21 on the screen pass. That's Mobley resetting on the left side. Now in motion. Oh! Trying to lead through the hole, but Harry Carson. He's a... Uh, has a new book on the market called Point of Attack. I asked Harry Carson, what's it about? He said about $16.95 at your local bookstore. <laughs> he and Lawrence Taylor, great pair of backers, and Carl Banks appears to be fitting in very nicely in that all-pro giant mold. Second down, eight and a half. the 26 for about four. Carl Banks there for the Giants. All big tenor out of Flint, Michigan, then to Michigan State, and the number one pick of the Giants in 84. Taking the 3-4 defense, you'd expect your linebackers to be your leading tacklers. That does not always happen. But for this Giant team, it clicks right down. The four leading tacklers, their four starting linebackers. The two at the top of the list, Lawrence Taylor and Carl saw the hold. Leonard Marshall putting pressure on Elway. Billy Bryan just couldn't keep him out of there and had to grab a hold and hook him. And there's another flag on the sideline. Dan Reeves out on the field arguing. 64 Denver. Penalties decline. Fuck down. You could see it all the way from our booth as Marshall will go inside right here and just drive his way past Brian and Brian knows that he's gone look at him he's got to hook him and he'll drag him and drag him and finally turn him loose but the official looking from behind simply says son I got to throw the flag on you you can go to a disco and not see people that close <laughs> And Reeves was arguing about something that happened in front Upfield. of him. I think he felt that his receiver had been knocked down illegally. Well, quite possibly arguing about something else, but I think I'm it's going to cost right him again. On the bench, penalty is declined. It's fourth down. Both penalties declined. Two majors, an unsportsmanlike and a holding because the Giants want the ball, and Dan Reeves is furious. Uncharacteristic of Reeves, who really works at holding his composure on the sideline. 42-year-old Reeves, the former Cowboy star from the University of South Carolina. There's Bill Parcells. He says, I want the 15 on the unsportsmanlike. We don't have to decline that. That's a dead ball foul. Linebacker at Wichita State. The Lions drafted him. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the Denver bench. Fourth down. Yeah, you have to mark that one off. That isn't a matter of uh, saving a down. It's already fourth down when Reeves goes out onto the field, technically. So Chris Norman comes in, and his putting has been somewhat suspicious. He had one blocked last week against the Chiefs. One blocked early in the year, saved by a penalty against Seattle. They'll come after him here, I think, especially deep in his own territory. McConkey deep at the giant 45. Short, dying spiral. for Denver to the giant 48 but nevertheless only a 39 yard punt even if you don't get the punt you can create enough fear in a punter that he'll kick it high and short so with 12 22 left in the first half here at Giant Stadium it's tied at three Giant Stadium, today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Braun Electric Shavers, Braun, designed to perform better. And by Magnavox, developing new technologies for your entertainment. Nobody puts it together like Magnavox. 
Dick Enberg and Merlin Olsen at Giant Stadium. Phil Sims trying to hit his tie uh, wide receiver Bobby Johnson, and I believe we have a defensive hold against the Broncos. No, it's the other way. something that the officials have been interpreted uh, differently the last few years. Remember, it used to be the wide receiver get away with murder, and now they're looking at what he does with his hands as well. It used to be you could punch out those defensive backs, and they'd say, oh, it was an accident. <laughs> Pass interference, number 88 offense, first down. So 10 yards back to the giant 38-yard line against Johnson, wide receiver from Kansas. He has 22 catches this year, four for touchdowns. He's been a big touchdown producer for the Giants, although not catching a lot of passes, a high percentage for scores. In fact, in the three years counting this one, he has 15, 19 touchdown passes. Morris hit by Steve Wilson in it, a defensive back position at the 44-yard line. Let's check other scores. Well, they're having some fun in Cincinnati with Esiason against Kramer, 14-10 in the first quarter. Pittsburgh at Cleveland, 7-0, a big game for the Browns fighting with Cincinnati for first in the AFC Central. New England, as you just heard, James with a touchdown to give them a 9-0 lead against Buffalo. Houston, a touchdown over Indianapolis, and Tampa Bay hits on a field goal at home. Here it's 3-all, 11-45 left in the first half. On second and long. And Joe Morris into Denver territory to the 46 yard line, where it'll be fourth and or third and four. Ten yards for Morris. Gradually eating at that long yardage situation and now into a manageable situation. Morris, again, the amazing thing about him is his consistency. Not a good week last week, but that probably as much as anything because of the game plan against the Vikes. driving but maybe a half yard shy of the first down as the Broncos brought up Dennis Smith from a safety spot to finish him off. Gilbert was there as well. There's Smith. Lanky defender. 6'3". You don't see many safety men with his height but he's got great leaping ability and speed to go with it. Tremendous penetration in there as we turn it. Watch it. Just turn it loose and watch Ken Woodard number 52. Now stop it right there. There's Wooder taking on two people right in the middle of the defense and stacking them up, forcing Morris outside and then breaking off and getting part of the tackle. Tremendous play by number 52, Ken Wooder. And the Giants have called time to think this one over. Fourth and one at the Broncos, 43. Bill Parcells will go for it on fourth down again. He has been very active on fourth down. Shows his confidence in his offense. Eight for 12. That's a lot of fourth down conversions as a comparison against the Giants. The opponents have only tried it once. 0 for 1. Oh, yeah. I don't blame him. <laughs> he tries for the 13th time. Fourth and 1. They may have an audible. No, no. That's what they're looking for. The offside in the contact. They're saying he made contact. I think he did. They're simply trying to draw them off sides in that situation. That's a deliberate attempt. I think I would flow, throw the flag on the quarterback who made a quick move out of there. Tom Jackson is arguing. Let's look at it again. Bill Parcells wants a first down on the penalty and the Broncos want their own penalty call. On the far side, there's the quick move. And you see the, the contact made on the far side of the line. The defensive man can move in there as long as he gets back. But if he touches someone, it's an automatic penalty. But the quarterback is not allowed to make a deliberate hard move out of there with the attempt to draw the defense off sides. Two men should have been ticketed. I'd call it penalty both ways and throw two flags in the air. Well, it's the third uh, consideration. That's delay of game. And that's the five yards that the Giants receive. Well, that was... Uh, one tactical gamble by Parcells that didn't play. Now, we can't tell from this angle whether contact was made. It was Tom Jackson, the linebacker, and he may have been far enough outside that he crawled across, crawled back without hitting anyone. Landetta aiming this one toward the near corner. Great-looking kick. 
Nope, his foot was on the line, and then the ball squirts into the end zone anyway. So the Broncos will get it at the 20 as Greg Lasker, the rookie from Arkansas, almost saved it inside the one. Timeout, three all at Giants Stadium in the second. Well, Sean Landetta narrowly missing. His punt being downed at the one-yard line. Denver receives it on the touchback of the 20. Boy, this young man out of Towson State of Maryland. Kicked in the USFL with the Stars. He has been a bonus for the Giants. Got to love the fact that he gets them long and consistent, and also the fact he gets such great hang time. Dick, we talked about the very complex nature of the Bronco defense. The Giant defense at the other end of the spectrum. Basically a very conservative defense. Much more physical defense than is the Bronco defense. And that's exhibited partly in their size and also their approach to the game. They're going to line up on you. There's Bill Belichick on the other side. He calls the defensive signals and he says basically we're going to line up, tell you what we're going to do, but then we're going to do it. You've got to block us away from it. That's right. You've got to make us, you've got to push us out of our defense. Where the Broncos will try to trick you, fool you, slant, tricks, various defensive positions. Sammy Winder, Carl Banks greets him. Winder from Southern Mississippi, again the leading rusher for the Broncos. He's 10th best in the NFL with 640 yards coming in. And in this first half, the Broncos with a goose egg compared to the Giants' 51 yards rushing. But where it counts, three all on the board. I still think that that will come back to haunt them at the end of the day. They've got to get some running going here or that uh, giant pass rush is going to start telling on Elway. The tight end at the 35, the 40, and the big guy all the way to the 48-yard line from Salem College of West Virginia, Orson Mobley. When I talked to the giant defensive coaches about this Denver offense, I said, what do they miss most? Is it the big running back, the power back? And they said, no, it's the great pass-catching tight end. Well, the Giants are hopeful that this man, Orson Mobley, can become that kind of target for Elway. Does a good job on that play. You can see how big he is. He is a giant. But they have not had the great pass-catching tight end, and that really hurts them. Mobley is 6'5 and 256 pounds. Ooh. Gene Lang to the 49-yard line. It's 3-all here at Giant Stadium. Let's check on other scores. Ahmad Rashad, NFL 86. All right, Dick, in Houston, the Oilers score on this four-yard pass from Warren Moon to Alan Pinkett, the former Notre Dame running back. They lead the hapless Colts 10-3 in the second quarter. And by the way, the Colts haven't won since beating Houston last year. Clarence K., we told you he was suspended by Dan Reeves last week for persistent tardiness. And he is injured now, and that's perhaps why we're seeing Orson Mobley. Mobley played last week, and they may have found the tight end they're looking for, the Broncos. A timeout, 8 minutes, 27 seconds remaining in the first half. Still working on the hand of tight end Clarence K. John Elway, meanwhile, uses this break to talk with his head coach, Dan Reeves. We're in the second quarter, tied three all. The ball just across the 50-yard line into Giants territory. And there are the instant photographs taken upstairs of the Giant defenses, then hustled down to Joe Collier, the defensive genius of these Broncos. Been around a long time, and a man who I wouldn't want to play a card game with him. He, uh, he remembers everything and he'll try anything to beat you. That's what he's looking at, try to determine just how the Giants line up. Now, Gerald Wilhite, the leading receiver for the Broncos this year, is in the game, and he's way out to the left, out of your picture. Watson in motion. Second down and eight. They're coming with the linebackers. Winder, tackled for a loss by Carson. The Broncos lose about four. Try and get that isolation to back on the backer, but it didn't pay off there. Chicago on only a safety against Green Bay at home.
Third down and 12 at the Denver 46 and a half. Elway trying to find Mark Jackson or Will Hite. They were both in the pattern. Will Hite short and Jackson deep and Elway couldn't find either. But he did a excellent job of reading the rush. Stepped inside a corner blitz by Patterson. I can't remember a quarterback who is more nimble and aware of what's happening in the pocket. And uh, we asked Dan Reeves yesterday, how many sacks would you have if you had an immobile quarterback? He said, don't ask me that kind of question. <laughs> They've only been sacked 25 times on the season. And I think that number would easily double with an immobile quarterback. McConkey inside the 15. to the 14. Woodard wraps up McConkey after a two-yard return. 40 yards on the punt. And with it, a timeout. We're at the midpoint of the second quarter at Giants Stadium on a beautiful November football afternoon. Giants jerseys with a reminder. Memorial to Spider Lockhart, former defensive back. It's been a rough four or five years in the Giant organization. They lost a fine and popular Assistant coach Bob Ledbetter, a former running back Doug Kotar as well. First down, that's a reflection of the Giants' better running game thus far. 3-3 three, three the score. Giants start from there, 16 and a half. Joe Morris caught from behind. Lewis Wright met the play, but it was Tony Colorado, number 69, who got to him first, a former star at the University of Southern California. We talked about the shifting of the Denver defense. Now watch them. They'll come out. They'll line up this way. Now watch the two ends. Just before the snap, both of them will shift inside. Both linebackers will shift. So they give you an entirely different look. Sims now has seen one thing, and now he's looking at an entirely different defense. That's a good example of one of the many tricks in Collier's defensive book. This time he puts nine men on the line of scrimmage. Sims underneath the Carthen, and it's Colorado again who makes the tackle back-to-back. -back. Hunley got to him first, but Colorado, who is playing near his hometown, he went to high school over in Brooklyn, plays classical music, and uh, fine student as well. He was an academic uh, second-team All-America at SC. Ball at the 20. Third down and six. to McConkie at the 36-yard line as Sims was being pressured by Rulon Jones. Well, if you stick around, after we go to Ahmad Rashad, we're going to show you a balloon. No, what is that? We're not going to show you the balloon. No, we're not going to go to Ahmad Rashad. And now we're not even going to show you the balloon. <laughs> there was a balloon on the field. I saw it, Dick. Landetta will kick it to Gerald Wilhite back at the 35. Ooh, very close was Randy Robbins to the block. Wilhite, ever a stumbler to the 38-yard line. Stumbled his way to a 70-yard return last week for a touchdown. Wilhite, a gymnast. Here is Landetta. All the pressure in the world from the left-hand side. You'll see the man fly by him. Robbins go by right there. Just fingertips away from a block on that particular play. Landetta with a 49-yard punt, seven yards on the return as Robbins thinks about what almost happened. And Landetta says, hey, that was too close. He also said the snap was high, forced me out of my rhythm. You see him talking to the center there. See what the Broncos do on first down. Leonard Marshall was there first, and Jim Burt finished the job. Well, we 
talked about wanted men, about putting those quarterbacks down. Been a while coming, but the Giants finally get there. Marshall grabs the shoulder of Elway, Burt there to polish him off, and all of Elway's ideas about getting out of that one quickly uh, disappeared. I don't know how they'll divide up that sack. Probably a half a piece, wouldn't you think? I think the first man gets it. It'll be Marshall's sack. And second and long, Elway. To Watson, and it's through the veteran's hands. He won't drop many of those. And that was a picture of patience by Elway. With blue shirts swarming around, he was able to set himself and gun and had his man open. Leonard Marshall will go all the way around behind. Stuttered, 70, working man to man, keeping Marshall away. Marshall, is, that's actually a situation where they want to keep Elway in the pocket. Now, they said there are two, ty there are two kinds of approaches to Elway. We'll box him in, make him stay in that pocket, and we'll also try and force him out and then get somebody to chase him. That's the case where they simply said, we're going to keep you in that pocket, make you throw. I don't know if that's such a good idea or not. Elway wants time on third and 19. 526 remaining in the first half. Phil Sims waiting his turn. John Elway called time on third and 19. Make sure that the call was in agreement. Running out of time in this first half. Only five and a half minutes left before the intermission. Stay tuned for NFL 86 at halftime. We'll have all the scores and the highlights for you, as well as uh, Ensign McCallum talking about his uh, Navy NFL experience. How he can work two jobs in one. Down the middle to Jackson. And that is going to be rolled a fumble. Kenny Hill has it. Ball whistled dead back where Hill fell on the football as they ripped it away from Jackson. Giants get it at the 43. Elway, under great pressure from Marshall, able to get that pass on target. Catch made, both feet down. The end of the play now as Jackson makes the cut right here, and Elway has that ball in the air. Jackson will go up and make the catch. Watch his feet come down. Got both feet on the ground. And then, before he can hit the ground, the ball is stripped away. Fine defensive play. An alert pounce by Hill, and the Giants have an opportunity offensively. Credit 23, Perry Williams, for forcing the fumble. The first turnover of the game. Sims off play action. Down the middle and wide open. Fumble, and that's the Broncos to recover. Stacy Robinson fumbles. And for the Broncos, it's covered by Ricky Hundley. Well, in the turnover department, both teams playing error-free over the first quarter. And now we have back-to-back -back turnovers. Steve Foley was the man who made the hit on Robinson. Dan Reeves, every time we've talked to him before a game this year, I guess we've done them four or five times, this is what he talks about. We have to be plus turnover sack table. He combines the two statistics. He wants to be positive in both. Watch it again, and obviously again. Legitimate catch, and the ball stripped away before the receiver hit the ground. Boy, that's good swarming defense by both these defensive teams. Broncos get it back just about where they were when uh, Elway's pass was complete and then fumbled. Winder across the 30-yard line. Suddenly the man that uh, recovered the fumble, he's hanging on to it. Jim Burt in on the tackle, number 64 for the Giants, and he probably stretches that jersey as tightly as anyone in the NFL. There it is. <laughs> he's got that pull so wide, the 6-4 and four are almost under the rib cage. He said that he learned a lesson his first game as a rookie, lined up against Mike Webster of the Steelers, the All-Pro center. He said, by the time he got through pulling and tugging and undressing me, he said, I'm not going to give anyone anything extra to hang on to. And he said, that's when I decided to strip it up like that. Well, of course, you know, it started with the defensive lineman putting that kind of 
gear on. And then the offensive lineman, of course, starting to use it. And then it's come back now as they've allowed the holding by the offensive alignment. You don't want to give them anything to get their hands on. But it used to be the first time I ever saw it done was by the offensive lineman. And John Wilbur, then with the Cowboys, the first I ever saw to lace that jersey down. Second down, about six and a half. L.A., too tall. Vance Johnson, who is playing today without a knee brace. He had arthroscopic surgery on that right knee after the first few games of the year and has been wearing a brace, and he's decided... He's just not had his full speed. He wants to go without it today. Again, the Giants opting to force Elway to stay in that pocket. That means they're not going to get as much pressure on him, but they feel that he's much more effective when he's running out of that pocket, when he's creating plays, than he is when he's playing within the framework of the offense. Third and six. Elway running for a first down and has it. At the 41-yard line, Byron Hunt, the linebacker from SMU, got him down, but not until Elway had scrambled for 10. Lawrence Taylor had him for a moment. You might ask, wasn't he in the grasp? Well, there's another word to go with it, grasp and control. Taylor from the right side, watch him. They've got a stun on, breaks clean, no chance, but Elway, with good strength and quickness, gets outside. Byron Hunt's going to show you some speed here. We haven't seen Elway run down from behind many times. First down at the 41. That's about the longest run of the game for the Broncos underneath the winder at the 47-yard line. That was indeed Joe Costanza, our master statistician, confirming that Elway's 10-yard scramble, the best run of the first half for Denver. Two defensive teams who have posted nine and two records. And it's been played that way. The defense is dominant. Second and a short five. And Elway going for a bundle to Johnson. And there's the flag against Perry Williams. Elway doing a good job of getting that ball out high and long. The Giants on that play were trying to get the heat on Elway. Coming quickly with a lot of bodies upfield. Elway threw it early and hung it deep. Here's the end of that play, and there's the contact right there. No question that Williams dropping that shoulder in, knocking the receiver out, not making an attempt to go at that football. Of course, uh, that one's not hard to throw the flag on. Had he been turning when that contact, looking at the ball, he might have gotten away with the, the call, but he pushed first, then turned, and it becomes the longest play of the entire game. 38-yard penalty. First down, 15. Broncos in position to take the lead. A little confusion. Elway had too many receivers going to his left. Fake reverse. And incomplete. Winder was out of bounds. Well, that did not fool the Giants. And while Elway seemed to have a world of time, no one could break open. Other scores, the Bears on a safety. That's been it. 21-17, Cincinnati and Minnesota in contrast in a high-scoring affair. 14-all, Pittsburgh at Cleveland. Those two longtime rivals. New England leads 12-0, trying to go 9-3. Houston by a touchdown over Indianapolis at home, and Detroit opens a bigger lead at Tampa Bay. Second and ten. Beautiful giant stadium. 50-degree day. Watson was the closest Bronco. Here's a man that's open. Ahmad Rashad. All right, Dick, in Cleveland, the Steelers' Walter Abercrombie takes the pitch, goes around right in for 38 yards for the score, his second on the day. They're midway through the second quarter, and it's all tied at 14-all. But, Dick, what about the balloon? <laughs> well, it's uh, we got them all ready for when uh, you make the announcement, Ahmad Rashad. I know you're on uh, pins and needles at this point, waiting for the arrival of the new one. We wish uh, Phyllis and 
Ahmad and Rashad's the best. On the reverse to Johnson. Now he's looking for Elway. He's covered. Johnson will just throw that one away wisely. The closest player was Lawrence Taylor. Now the Giants not fooled by that trick play as Vance Johnson, and they were looking for Elway, and Leonard Marshall, number 70, the defensive end, played his position well. Elway came that way, and Marshall was right on him. <laughs> Gets a little hand slap, a little high five in the huddle. Of course, the Raiders were not ready for that play in the opening game of the season, and Elway scored on a 23-yard reception. The Giants say, hey, you get us on that first time, okay, but we saw the film, too. 32-yard field goal by Carlos. And it is good. So Carlos is two for two, and the Broncos lead six to three. Now, what are you going to do on Thanksgiving, Merlin? Well, I don't know what I'm going to do, but uh, I'm going to be in an area where they're going to be sliding down the slopes, and I think you're going to do the same thing. Well, no, but first, no way, dude, don't get on the ski slopes. We'll get to Vail later, but first, we got to go to Dallas, and there are no slopes there, at least immediately. We're going to see Seattle and Dallas at 3.30 Eastern time, and we hope you'll spend part of your holiday with us as uh, we enjoy that turkey uh, brisket that they have down there at Texas Stadium. Always been an exciting opportunity to share a Thanksgiving dinner with folks all across this country, Dick. Well, the Seahawks have fallen on tough times, losing four in a row, and Dallas has that remarkable record of not only winning on Thanksgiving, but then winning the next week as well. In fact, it's now starting to stir up some discontent in the NFC East. The Giants and Washington saying, hey, maybe some of the rest of us ought to have that Thanksgiving home game. Yeah, we'll see. John Elway, aided by the 38-yard interference penalty, able to get the Broncos in tight. And Carlos converts from 32 yards out to give Denver a 6-3 lead. There didn't figure to be that many offensive opportunities, and we talked about the structure and the hard-nosed nature of these two defenses. So far, they have come far and few between. The Broncos getting a couple of chances for field goals, converting twice. Of course, the Giants converting on their opportunity as well. McConkie, short kick, 12-yard line. And he's out to the 33. Tough little kid. That McConkey, hardly a kid, 27, out of the Naval Academy, a helicopter pilot. He says people ask to compare catching punts to uh, flying a helicopter. He says, if I make a mistake on a punt, it's a fumble. Maybe we lose possession. I made a mistake trying to land that helicopter in the back of a destroyer at night in rough seas. The considerations were much more serious. A reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting, of course, our Budweiser most valuable player at the conclusion of today's game. Tony Galbraith fumbles, and Louis Wright has it for Denver. Had the whistle sounded. Well, so far we have no signal. Now they signal Denver's ball. And there it is, the second turnover for the Broncos. Both teams coming into this game with positive numbers on the turnover table. And Tony Galbraith can't believe that that ball was not whistled dead. Let's go back and look at the play. Watch it as it develops. Galbraith, little take, take the handoff out of the shotgun. Ball carried rather loosely, left hand. 77, Mecklenburg strips in at that arm. Watch him stripping, jerking on that arm. Let's see if we can see the putt there. Football already had popped out of there. Well, and had gone. It looked like the football broke loose before anyone touched the ground. Perhaps another angle might help. I believe they're reviewing it upstairs. Ball is at the 41-yard line of the Giants, and at least for the moment in possession of the Broncos. Galbraith was arguing that uh, he thought the whistle should have blown the ball dead. It obviously was out of his grasp before he hit the ground. It was a matter of whether or not a whistle had sounded, and apparently the, well, the officials on the field would have known that. Nick Scorich is the instant replay official today on the far right. I think that's the kind of play, though, that you simply have to say no visual proof to declare otherwise. Tough to see the ball. There's so now, many players you there. You see the ball right there rolling away, and it obviously is quite a distance from Galbraith. 
I think it was a good choice. Back to live action. Elway firing complete to Johnson inside the 25-yard line. It is a catch and 19 more yards. Vance Johnson with an excellent reception, skidding low. As we approach and we'll have the two-minute timeout. So a couple of turnovers. The Broncos able to stop the Giants after they had fumbled, got it back, went on to a field goal. They have it again, driving with a lead. All right, a marvelous shot here in New York. And in Cleveland, the Browns' Bernie Kosar hits Ozzie Newsom, the consummate tight end, who was wide open on this 21-yard touchdown. The Browns lead 21-14, second quarter. Denver leading 6-3 here at Giants Stadium with two minutes left in the second quarter. And a first down, Broncos, at the New York Giant 23. Draw play to Winder. Good call, and he has nearly 10 more inside the 15. Lawrence Taylor in on the tackle. Broncos love to put their tight ends in motion. Watch your right ear. Tight end is going to come in inside and fake the block. It's going to look like the trap and then go on through the block. They're going to hand the ball off in here, going to start up inside and then run the draw play. Actually, a, a way of finessing Jim Burt. Burt thinks it's going to come his way, and they just turn him out of there. Smart play, influence play, one run beautifully by the Broncos. Giants use a timeout with 127 remaining in the first half. It's 6-3, and Denver sits on the giant 15-yard line. Second down, a long one at the giant 15. Play action for Elway. And incomplete to Johnson, and Lawrence Taylor not pressuring the quarterback that time, but playing a tough defensive position in front of Johnson. Again, the Giants electing to give Elway a little time and cover his receivers, make him throw from that pocket, as opposed to trying to spring him and knock him out of there and let him throw on the run. Harry Carson, who had gone out for one play, has returned to his linebacker position for the Giants. Quick OK by trainer Ronnie Barnes, and he's back into the action. Third and a yard and a half. I think he got enough. Little quarterback draw. George Martin right there, the veteran defensive end. Interesting selection of plays as Elway faked a little step out of there to his left and just stepped back inside. They didn't need a lot, Dick, and I think he got about a yard, but I believe they're going to measure it. Watch Elway step toward the camera here and then drive back inside, just trying to set up the blocks for his offensive lineman. I'll tell you the one thing you've got to love about Elway. He'll do anything to help his team win a game. And it's a risk that Dan Reeves knows is very real because it means that often he puts his body in a situation where he can be injured. Big measurement. Indeed, he got enough. And the Bears add to that safety by Hampton. Scoring fest in Cincinnati has the Bengals up by four and Cleveland at home now leads by a touchdown. New England two touchdown plus lead. Houston by a touch and Detroit 14-3 at the half. A real good test for the Giant defense. They're back to the wall in this situation. 105 remaining in the half. Intercepted by George Martin. He's going to go all the way if Elway can't get him. 20. Martin has a touchdown. Martin's seventh touchdown, six from a defensive position, an NFL record, 78 yards. Talk about big plays. That was a huge play for 
the New York Giants. And what a dramatic turnaround. It appeared that the Denver Broncos were going to have a chance to add to their lead. And suddenly, George Martin jumped up and bit them. A leg raise, point after. 10-6, New York. The interesting thing to me, Dick, about that run is that Martin wanted to lateral the ball. He didn't want to keep it as he headed down the sideline. He had Lawrence Taylor behind him. He had Taylor behind him. Here's the little fake outside. They're trying to just throw it to the out man here. Little flare outside. Martin jumps up. Great one-handed grab. He was a basketball player wow. in Oregon. Now look at this. He wants to lateral the football. He's trying to lateral it to Lawrence Taylor. Elway gets a hold of him, and he just runs out of that block. Now Taylor says, well, you're going to carry it. Let me get a block for you. Billy Bryant, 64 down there, and it gets one block. There's a second block down there. And Martin, without benefit of a gas station, carried it into the end zone. The fans here at Giant Stadium roaring as they watch the instant replay. The Giants were one of only 11 NFL teams through the first 11 games not to get a touchdown on a return, make that one of nine. And now they've added theirs to the list of those who have scored on either an interception or a punt or kick return or a fumble. We'll, we'll show you another shot of that after the kick. What a what a dramatic play. What an emotional turnaround. And Undead, there's so much noise here, and now all of a sudden a stop, and the ball dropped right off the tee. Well, it's at least a 10-point play, maybe a 14-point play. Well, and the thing that it does, Dick, is to turn the emotion around in the stadium and certainly to carry a different emotion into both locker rooms here at the half. That's the big impact. Lang will take it out. It's a good return to the 30-yard line for Gene Lang. Let's go back to George Martin's play. 78 yards for Martin. He played with Lonnie Shelton basketball at the University of Oregon. And look at the great reflexes. Batting the ball, much like denying the pass inside. And Lawrence Taylor now, he says, come on, Lawrence, I'll give it to you. But Elway interfered. But Elway just uh, like water <laughs> off a duck's back. Harry Carson down there for one block. Collins for another block. Mark Collins. There were three excellent blocks thrown on that run. Only one who could tackle Martin was his own teammate, Taylor. He can even hit his own guys. So instead of a possible 13-3 lead for Denver, it's 10-6 the other way. Flags go down as Wilhite out of bounds with 31 seconds showing. Could possibly, again, be offensive interference from the angle it was thrown. Against the Giants. Against the Giants. Let's go back here. It's Denver inside the 15. Should they score a touchdown and there'd be very little time left on the clock, it could have been 13 to 3 Denver at the half. Martin's play turns it totally around and it's the Giants 10 to 6 with only 31 seconds left. Well, and that's the kind of thing that. Number 34, defense, first down. That was Patterson getting the call. That's the kind of thing a good defense can do for you. And we have to say that's the kind of thing that Denver's defense has done for them so many times. Backed up against the wall, forcing the turnover, taking the ball away. But, of course, in this sack, in this situation, the big plus, the points that go on the board at the other end of the field. Lang, that little shovel pass, flag down. Lang is tackled at the 47-yard line, and now timeout on the penalty. Let's see if it counts. We may have a holding call on Kenny Lanier thrown from the far side. Oh, motion against motion. Denver. Yeah. And now only 26 seconds. Illegal motion. 76 offense. And I'll push down. That was Lanier. You had the right guy. Well, he's trying to get his man off the ball. They want that defensive end to move. He actually did have a hold of him after the fact, but they called him for the movement rather than the holding. Watson left. Johnson slotted left. Jackson to the right side. Low 
kicks it out to Lang, who breaks a tackle, but doesn't get out of bounds. Clock is still running at the 45-yard line. 12 seconds, 11. And now they call time with 10. Yeah, I was surprised there. Lang was right on the sidelines. Could have dipped out of bounds, but did not. Well, Dick, that's a recent poll conducted by uh, sports writers, specifically about the quarterbacks. That's something they rated Elway down and was touch. But he certainly threw that one with nice touch. Yeah, Sport Magazine currently has a rating of all NFL quarterbacks. They have McMahon, Jim McMahon, rated first and Elway second. They said that if Elway had scored higher on the touch pass, he would easily have been number one. But I have a feeling if you today had each of the 28 coaches in the league had coaches vote for the quarterback they'd like most, I don't think McMahon would win it. I do think Elway might. <laughs> I think you're you're being kind. I, uh, Jim McMahon with his great talent, of course, uh, not making himself a very popular member of his Chicago Bear team, and certainly uh, not Mike Ditka's favorite on that team uh, by any means. Yeah, he might not even get his own head coach's vote. Ten seconds left. Second down and one. Ball at the 45. Denver could uh, go for one perhaps long out and try to get into deep field goal range. Now the one vote you get about Elway from most coaches is the fact that he can make big things happen. He can lift a team by himself. Not many quarterbacks can do that. Jonathan's a very loose deep defense. There is that long out and it's complete to Johnson who goes out of bounds. He had possession when he went out of bounds. The ball was not free after he had left the field to play a 24 yard play and that's exactly what Denver does go to the deep out four seconds left and here comes Carlos to try a long field goal how many quarterbacks in the NFL can throw that pass <laughs> it's a short list believe me it'll be 48 or 49 yards so it'll be a 48 yard field goal attempt by Carlos who's two for two as you can see in this first half Giants have the momentum going into that dressing room. And there is the man who gave it to him. A spectacular one-handed interception by George Martin. And then even more surprisingly, he rumbles 78 yards. The Giants lead. The two defensive coaches have to be pleased with those numbers. They have shut down the rushing game of the Giants, have the Broncos. Denver has had to pass the ball. That's what uh, the Giants expected. And Elway's been a bit more successful, but unable to score a touchdown. And then in the turnovers, two each, the one big interception by George Martin, the defensive end that went for the game's only touchdown. And you kind of, that, that conjured up uh, some bad thoughts on your part, some memories. I think I was remembering a play in a, in a playoff game against the Minnesota Vikings. We were lined up to kick a one-yard field goal. I mean, literally on the one-yard line. There's going to be an eight-yard field goal. And the ball was blocked carried all the way to the other end of the field it was it was a 10 10 point turnaround not quite as severe here although the Broncos certainly appeared to be in position to score and suddenly the ball goes the length of the field and the, the score is on the other team's scoreboard and you say wait a minute it's not supposed to be this way totally emotionally turns you upside down and it wasn't just an ordinary return by an ordinary player, a big guy able to elude Elway and some others. George Martin, and he has established uh, his own, uh, even furthered his own NFL record, six touchdowns by a defensive player. That's two more than anyone else in NFL history. Elway is going to try to get it to Will Height. And you said it early, Dick. That's a basketball athlete's move just to get his hands on that ball. Several good blocks to watch for. One right there. Couldn't see who it was on Lanier. But Elway has a chance to stop Martin right here. And Martin's just too big and strong. And I usually, and a defensive lineman so excited about getting the ball will fall down at that point. There are a couple of blocks coming. You'll see one by Collins right there as he dives. He's lucky he didn't get a clip on that one, although he did not get on the back of the legs. And there was a second block just behind that. But Martin now will be swarmed, as you said, by his own teammates. This is the toughest part of the whole run. <laughs> well, you can understand that emotion. And there's a, a rundown of the seven career touchdowns. One of those, as you see, the bottom was on a pass where Martin lined up as a tight end and gathered in a four-yard pass from Sims. But six were defensive touchdowns. And uh, 
those represent an NFL record. Bob Lilly of the Dallas Cowboys had four, and he remains in second place. So George Martin all alone in that category. A lineman's dream, and I'm sure that's the kind of thing that, that will be pleasant for George Martin to remember and tell his grandkids about uh, for out, uh, throughout the rest of his life. Martin, whose uh, younger brother Doug plays the same position, defensive end for the Minnesota Vikings. He had 10 sacks last year. He's the senior citizen, his 12th year with the Giants, 33 years old. Oh, he'll tell them all he was running about 9-4. <laughs> he did make the big play, though, was the one-handed catch and the way he whirled up field. He was the first step, got him 10 yards in front of the pack. Well, and he showed some great balance, as we said, getting away from Elway. And usually in that situation, a quarterback just kind of has to interfere, and it's enough to take a defensive lineman down who's not used to running with that football. But Martin able to hold up through that particular encounter and get downfield. There are Elway's numbers on the day. And again, they're leaning heavily on John Elway, and Elway's percentages are good, but we mentioned that he has not been successful with touchdowns over the past few weeks. Only two in the last five weeks, and he has yet to have one in this game. Now, we are waiting for the officials to kick it off. Apparently, uh, they are now ready. There's the stat I refer to, Dick, and we talked about it earlier in the game. Look at those dramatic stats for the first six games of the year. And those are not just Elway's stats. Those are team stats in a way. And Reeves was quick to point out yesterday, we're not giving John over the last few games the kind of help he needs. Now, if you say five in the last five and a half games, it's two touchdowns and six interceptions, counting the one by Martin. Carlos to kick it off. Second half underway. Solomon Miller, the rookie from Utah State. And the wide receivers out to the 25-yard line. So Phil Sims will bring on the offense. Sims, a uh, final word on the sidelines, and now the eight-year veteran from Moorhead State of Kentucky. Grew up in uh, Louisville, went to high school in Louisville. And it's a, he writes left-handed, and yet he's a right-handed passer highly competitive. He really admires Dan Fouts of the Chargers for that quality. And he's got the same fire inside. Morris, 36 yards in the first half. Denver zeroing in on Joe, and he gets about three on that play. Dick, my son Nathan, who's 13, writes left-handed, throws right-handed. Should I tell him that he's up to be a quarterback? Well, no, I tell him what, stay with a right handed, learn to hit left handed. <laughs> learn to hit, hit left handed. Hit left handed and either that or play golf. Uh, certainly a dominant uh, left hand playing right handed is a, an advantage for a golfer. Yeah, Brooks Robinson, he said the fact that he was a left handed rider helped him with that glove hand. He felt that was his stronger hand. Hostetler, far right, the third string quarterback. And it's to Bavaro's side, and the big tight end from Notre Dame can't make the catch. Steve Foley on the coverage. While we watch, uh, there's Hostetler going back uh, into the huddle. Bavaro from the other side, and Hostetler will go out. Yesterday, of course, uh, Clarence K, the tight end for Denver, is regarded as one of the better blocking tight ends in the NFL. We asked Bill Parcells about it. He said, Bavaro is two Clarence K's. He is by far the best blocking tight end in the NFL. In fact, he says he's so good, he could play defense for me right now. We'll keep an eye on him in the second half. Third down. Sims, plenty of room. And he has the first down across the 35-yard line. Finally run down by Freddie Gilbert after nine yards. Sims not quite as nifty as Elway. But never have we ever had a chance to doubt his courage. And he'll do anything he can to help his team win. In fact, has put his body on the line more times than you'd care to count. Injuries, a constant problem for him early in his career. But when he's healthy, he does things like this. He gets first downs. He gets touchdowns. Made the Pro Bowl last year as the starting NFC quarterback and was voted the most valuable player. Morris, a little misdirection. And Hunley was able to get him from the side, or Morris had a lot of room to go. It's another giant first down.
Let's go in and look at that tight end, Bavaro. We talked about his blocking just a moment ago, and of course, so crucial to have that big tight end who can take on those linebackers. Watch him now as he works on Jim Ryan. Gets position on Ryan to the outside and boxes him in and then actually gets in the road of Rulon Jones to keep Rulon Jones from pursuing to the outside. So not only blocked his man, but also managed to get in the road of a second tackler. Lines up on the left side this time. First down at the Giant 48. Morris. 40. 30. Joe Morris all the way to the 28-yard line. Louis Wright saved a touchdown. 24 yards for Joe Morris. Morris only had 36 yards in the first half. He's probably equaled that already in a couple of quick bursts here in the second half. But I said at the beginning of the game, I felt that he was perhaps the edge for the Giants. That didn't prove to be true in the first half, but so far, he's showing you why he is so important to them here in the second half. Leading 10-6 to six early in the third quarter, the Giants, using Joe Morris, have driven deep. It's Morris again. And Tom Jackson's penetration slowed that play, and Morris has to settle for three. Denver, an aggressive, slanting kind of defense. And if Morris can get up into the area in which those people are slanting left and right, he can use his good vision and his quick acceleration to run through some of those arm tackles. On that play, though, he had to make his decision so far in the backfield that there was no chance for him. Morris now with 76 yards rushing. That puts him over 1,100 for the year. He comes in second only to Eric Dickerson of the Rams. Number 71, Greg Cragen, the nose tackle. No one seemed to block him, and Morris has to settle for a two-yard gain. Sometimes you can go around and do things the back door. Cragen, the nose tackle, watch him here. Now, they're expecting to block him by coming out this way. He'll simply run around the block, which is not the way you're supposed to do it, but the results are great. Watch him as he slides around the block by the center, Bart Oates, and is just waiting there with open arms to greet Joe Morris. Ball at the 24-yard line. Third down and six. Caught in the backfield is Galbraith. They bring in Galbraith, and the defense immediately thinks pass because he is such an outstanding receiver. That's twice now they've handed off to him, and not fooled a bit was Freddie Gilbert from Georgia. And with that quick burst downfield, again, you see what a good defense can do. They get you down there, and they shut you down. Raul Allegre, who had a career last week with those five field goals and the winner in the final seconds, will now get an opportunity to kick one that's just beyond the 45-yard mark. He's got it. So Allegre, who hit one 31 yards in the second quarter, nails one from 45, and the Giants open a 13-6 lead. From Giants Stadium, today's game is brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth. We are working together to be the best. By the Stanley Works. Stanley helps you do things right. And by Midas for mufflers, brakes, and shocks. Trust the Midas touch. With Merlin Olson, Dick Kenberg at Giants Stadium. Unusually warm late November afternoon, around 50 degrees. In fact, they think we might have some rain later this afternoon, hopefully after game. This game is over, 9.46 left. Third quarter, the Giants now lead by 7, 13 to 6. Allegra's kick, a sidewinder that will kick out of bounds. So they'll send that one back five. What they like about Allegra, who has had a couple of shots, uh, he was picked off as a free agent by Dallas, then traded to the Colts for a number nine by the Cowboys, and then available to the Giants, that not only has he shown a good, powerful leg, uh, Bill Parcells has a good athlete, and he's able to place his kickoffs where we want them. Down deep, tuck them into that corner, or makes it so difficult for that return man. Do I step out of bounds? Do I try to field this one? And that was what he was trying to accomplish on that kick. Do you think Parcells is tired of looking at kickers? 
This He's is... the fourth roster kicker of the year, and you've got to guess at how many they have seen, aside from those that have been on the roster. So they bring it back to the 30-yard line. The Giants, two tough ones staring at them after this one. Next week, they go to San Francisco, and two weeks from today, at home against the Redskins. Denver, meanwhile, will play Cincinnati at home next week. Ken Bell. Ho! Oh! He was a human missile out to the 29-yard line as Lee Rusan made the hit. Youngsters have got to have a chance on special teams. Number 22, watch him. He'll just dive at the last second, throw himself in there, and just get enough of Bell's leg to trip him up right there. Just hooks that inside foot, and the foot goes around behind, and Bell goes down. Fine special teams play. Give you a feeling of the speed of that play from Rusan's hit to where Bell finally hit the turf was about nine yards. Trailing by seven, the Broncos' first possession of the second half. L.A. going deep to Jackson, almost intercepted. Mark Collins, the rookie from Cal State Fullerton, was there. Well, here's our lineup on Thursday for our Thanksgiving special. NFL 86 and host Bob Costitz, uh, Frank DeFord, Mark Bonacanti, son of the former uh, famous uh, linebacker of the Dolphins who is paralyzed from a football injury. A very touching story there. Ahmad Rashad and Roger Staubach's Thanksgiving memories. Roger Staubach, still the all-time cowboy in terms of popularity. And Paul McGuire and his romance with the New York Jets. That continues. That's men at Seattle Offside. and Dallas. Flag goes down. You heard someone on the sideline say offside, and the pass intended for Winder is awry. Clarence K, number 88, blew the count up early. New York with a choice now taking the down or the five yards. There's K, top of your screen, 88. He saw Marshall move his hand, and then he reacted to the defensive player. Number 88, penalty is They'll decline it. It's third down. Third down and 10 for Denver. Watson left. Vance Johnson slotted left. Mark Jackson, number 80, to the right. Good protection for L.A. who drills it to Mobley, and that big tight end has a first down at the 42-yard line. What a target he is. Bears 9-0 over Green Bay. Cincinnati hanging on to a one-point advantage in the third. Pittsburgh trails Cleveland by a touchdown. Cleveland and Cincinnati, of course, tied for first in the central. New England, 15-3. 17-3, the Oilers, Detroit pounding on Tampa Bay 28-10. Those are all the other early games, and here, the Giants on a 78-yard interception return for a touchdown by defensive end George Martin, the only touchdown of this game. First down at the 42. Elway throws to Mobley again, and he has a first down at the Giant 40-yard line. Kenny Hill. And company wrestling him down. Hill, a former Raider. I saw you talking with uh, Hill yesterday, the former Yale star. I asked him, I said, how many ex-Raiders are starting in the NFL? And he just gave me a blank look. He said, are there any other ones? And I <laughs> said, I don't think so. Unusual for the Raiders to let someone get away with his talent. But he certainly has fit in here and become a very important part of this giant defense. Came over here two years ago for a number seven draft pick. First down, just outside the Giant 40. Mobley has caught two straight passes in motion. And a flag goes down as Taylor drops Lang. Dick, the Broncos incorporating three tight ends on that play. Lawrence Taylor had moved across to the left side. Must have taken a crack to the skull as he is a little wobbly getting up, tapping his shoulder, perhaps a pinched nerve but the 
Broncos incorporating three tight ends, trying to control that football, trying to get a running game going. Illegal hands, number 64 defense, first down. Jim Burt, legal use of the hands on defense. He may have gotten his hand up inside a mask or up into the face of the blocker. 7.45 left in the third quarter. Let's check elsewhere, NFL 86. All right, Dick, in Houston, remember Mike Rozier, former Heisman Trophy winner out, of, winner out of Nebraska? Well, here he gets jammed up on the sidelines, decides to cut a new route, and then shakes and bakes his way 19 yards to the end zone, 17-3 Houston, third quarter. All right, I'm out here after the penalty. First down for the Broncos at the 33 of the Giants. Elway has a man wide open. It's Mobley again. He fumbles, and the Giants have it. George Martin again. A flag is down, back where Elway threw the ball, but it's against Denver, so the Giants decline, Giants get it back. The omnipresent George Martin gathers the pumpkin again. Holding, number 60 offense, penalties decline, first down. Orson Mobley came in motion to the inside and then went back outside. Heads down the sideline. There's an assignment blown there as Mark Collins, the rookie, didn't see him stop until it was too late. But watch the ball bounce away here. Good hit on the inside by Carson, 53. That ball already gone. And there's Faithful George with his hands on it. Well, it was Harry Carson who forced the fumble, nailing that man, Orson Mobley. And then uh, Martin recovers. Turnovers have beaten the Broncos the only two times they have lost this year. They have been in the minus column in the turnover table. Oh, how it feels good to be in the right place at the right time. Second and eight. Mecklenburg there to make the play as Morris was bobbling the ball. Not only bobbled it, but left it hanging in the air. Had a Bronco been closer, that could have been seven for the Broncos. Carl Mecklenburg, we have not heard his name as many times today. In fact, both of our two defensive stars, Mecklenburg and Lawrence Taylor, and of course you know they are marked men by the offenses, but there's the bobble that I mentioned. And had Louis Wright been a step closer, he might have scooped that ball and taken it for the touchdown. But both teams have done a good job of controlling the big guns on the other team defensively, but not the defense. Sims has thrown the ball only 10 times in this game. There's the 11th, and the closest man was Stacy Robinson, but Sims was unloading. As Freddie Gilbert, who's become a fine pass pressure, was there again. Taylor is still hurting. It's his shoulder. Well, we had a chance to talk to Eric Dickerson, and this is the way he felt about Lawrence Taylor. He said, hey, if you've never been tackled by LT, don't feel bad about it. He said, believe me, there are better things you can do with your time. Well, he has put some hurt on some people, and that's probably one of the reasons he's got a bad shoulder. Landetta facing 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Another good solid kick to Wilhite who has to drift back to the 26. And Wilhite is drilled at the 33 yard line and a flag goes down. Zeke Moat, the backup tight end, made the tackle. 49 yards for Landetta. Nine yards on the return. And let's check the penalty. Against the Broncos. That'll cost them 10 back. Six minutes and 12 seconds remain in the third quarter here at Giant Stadium. Number 22 on a receiving team. First down. Denver will have the ball when we return from the Bronco 23-yard line. The Broncos defense able to recover from Orson Mobley's fumble, but it's still the Giants, 13 to six.
Yeah, the hometown, new hometown for George Martin is right here at the Meadowlands. He's been the big play performer for the Giants who lead 13 to 6. And here's the strong arm of Elway going to work. Oh, Carl Banks, and he'll pick up the penalty. That was very close to being another giant touchdown as he was all over Clarence Kane. If Elway's throw had been a little short, Banks had six. But Elway, of course, uh, putting that where it couldn't be intercepted. And Banks there with an arm over the top before the ball arrived. You'll see him from the inside reaching the receiver right there with the bump. And you're not allowed to go through the man to touch the football. The penalty will give a first down to the Denver Broncos. Dick, you talked earlier about Reeves's philosophy of combining turnovers and what he calls traps or sacks. He said in the two games we've been negative, we have lost. Of course, that's the Jets game and the San Diego game. There are minus two in that ratio right now. They get a first down on the penalty, even though it's a one-yard penalty. L.A., 30. 35, 36, or 7, depending on where they spot. Well, they're going to only give it to the 35-yard line. A first down, nevertheless. It's where the ball is when his bottom hits the ground. He's got a lot of yards. Elway is the leading Denver rusher with those 29 yards. That tells you the kind of tough giant defense against the run. In fact, the best that anyone has done against the Giants all year was uh, Darren Nelson 68 yards last week up in Minnesota. Winder into the arms of Harry Carson at the 39 yard line. Three yard gain. You look down on that field and down in the trenches where the big men work so hard and very often are ignored. Keith Bishop uh, out of the lineup a number of weeks with a bad knee. They knew that they had to have him in there today. Number 54 left guard. And of course he's important because he's over there where they're blocking out on Marshall and Taylor in there with a bad knee has been doing his job well all day long. They pick up the blitz and they go along to Watson. Little Bumping with Terry Williams. Terry Kennard was there as well, and Watson could not have caught the ball. It was about seven yards downfield. Watson, who has only 26 catches coming into this game this year from Temple, and his football model was Raymond Berry. He had 61 catches last year, so he's uh, well under his production of a season ago. Third and seven, Watson way out to the right with Jackson left. All the way in the shotgun. Taylor unable to get to Elway, so Elway's going to scramble again. And out of bounds with a first down at the Giant 47. 15 more yards for Elway. Well, it's that mobility and agility along with that rifle arm that makes Elway perhaps now the most feared quarterback in the NFL. He can get you the big play. He certainly can, Dick. When he's scrambling, finally got Lawrence Taylor to talk about him. He's the best there is. We have to keep him in the pocket, put a lot of pressure on him. Well, the Giants have tried it both ways. They have tried to control him in the pocket. He has hurt them from the pocket. And he's also hurt them when they've tried to flush him out of the pocket and have him chased down. Yeah, Taylor was dogging on that last play, but they blocked him wide, and Elway ran inside on him. Here he comes again. Mobley has a first down inside the third. Check that Clarence K. Not Mobley with Terry Kennard making the tackle. So K gets a rare catch. You don't expect him to be around the ball. That's only his uh, 13th catch of the year. Elway nose to nose with Lawrence Taylor as LT was dogging him on that play, sliding across with him. And Elway just rifled it on the run as he moved to his right. Let's watch Lawrence Taylor, Merlin, as he comes out of that defensive huddle and lines up. 
and just see whether or not he might be. Taylor now takes a wide split as if he's going to check Jackson, the slot man. And now they bring Mobley over to that side. And here comes Taylor. Underneath they go to Vance Johnson to the 28-yard line. Now those are the little things that are so intriguing. It's much like baseball and as we watch the World Series, Garagiola's game within a game. There's Taylor out there as if he's going to play the receiver. Uh-uh. Delayed blitz. And Elway, you think Elway knows he's coming? Watch him here. <laughs> That's a little bullfighter, a little, a little El Toro there. But Elway able to get that ball off in time. The Giants, of course, love to blitz Lawrence Taylor. There's not a linebacker in football who blitzes with the effectiveness of a Lawrence Taylor. Boy, and he plays so hard on every down. Here he comes again. Elway has a man open, but can't find Johnson. Jim Burt finally breaking through that protective pocket. But Taylor attracted at least two blockers himself. Well, you've got to put big man on big man over there. That means you don't leave Taylor for one of your running backs to pick up. Usually you'll slide your tackle out, slide your guard out, try and get one of those big men out there to get in front of him, and then tell all those linebackers, hey, if they're coming up the middle, you take one of the little guys. Third and five. Actually, Gene Lang was knocked down by his own man, so they'll allow that game to the 25. It'll still be short of a first down. Giants want the ball marked back, but Lang fell down over his own man, or so it appeared. Little shovel pass there as... Elway will take it and just flip it inside to make it look like the pass rush. They get Martin upfield, and there's the hit right there. Now, if Lang is not touched by a defensive man before he's up, he's a legitimate runner at that point, and he was indeed up before they touched him. So he's entitled to the yardage, and Carlos will get another chance. Fourth and about a yard and a half, so Carlos, his fourth field goal attempt, he's made two of three. This is 42 yards. Can't hit it any better than that. So the Denver offense is three Carlos field goals, 32, 40, and 42. Timeout. When you a measure of the toughness of these two defensive teams, the offense has not as yet scored a touchdown on either side. 13 to nine. Two giant field goals and Martin's 78-yard interception return and three field goals by Carlos, who puts it in play. And he really drills this yeah, one. that one. McConkey will have to take it at the 20 with a timeout. One minute and 47 seconds remaining in the third quarter here at Giants Stadium, where the Giants lead 13-9. Welcome back to Giants Stadium. The... Uh, Marshall run or uh, the, the run like I was thinking about Jim Marshall running the wrong way and and uh, the touchdown today and the fact that you once I you had a long was it a fumble recovery or fumble an interception? recovery uh, but there was another yards. 75 in the picture that day De Deacon Jones is running along beside me much like this scene with his hands out saying ladder 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 <laughs> all he has to do is throw one block and I got a touchdown he's saying ladder 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 <laughs> all the way down the field you've never forgiven I never Deacon forgiven him <laughs> never forgive him I still remember it so. so Deacon Jones he wanted the six and Merlin Olsen instead gets knocked down after a long run. Yeah, but they not the case. George Martin, 78 yards for the score. Phil Sims goes to work. Deep downfield, and a flag intercepted by Foley. And Foley gets to the 44-yard line. That's an interesting call. The ball would not have been catchable. We've got a Steve Wilson interference call downfield, and I think it's going to be marked as a completion. Receiver breaking open was pushed by Wilson at the last minute, and I think that one is just going to be carried back. Number 45 defense. Oh! 
touchdown. I think Dan Reeves was saying there was no way in the world that even with, with that push, the ball could have been caught. It was about 10 yards to the other side and intercepted easily by Foley. He may be right about that, but the ball was way downfield when the push occurred, and I don't think the official could see whether that ball was thrown into the area or not. It happened early. First down at the 48 of Denver. Joe Morris, Mecklenburg slows him down, and Dennis Smith gets him out of bounds at the 42. Now, we've talked about the fact that Carl Mecklenburg moves around a great deal on that Denver defense. In fact, can play any of seven positions uh, all four down positions and the or four line backing positions and three front positions and if they go to a four man line can jump into any of those line positions that puts a strain on the other players they have to learn when they have to move other positions as well it takes a lot of unselfishness a lot of mental discipline on defense Morris and he's drilled by Tom Jackson Jackson, the oldest linebacker in the NFL by a week or so in his 14th season, the 35-year-old veteran from University of Louisville. Maurice Carthen trying to get at Jackson's feet, but Jackson just off too quickly. Watch Carthen go at number 57, Jackson, right here. Sees him coming in, throws himself in there, but Jackson just throws his body in and sweeps the legs out from underneath Joe Morris. Third down and seven. Sims working on Steve Wilson. They tried to go to Bobby Johnson. And Wilson just enough to deny that long gainer. Again, part of the kaleidoscope of the Denver defense. Watch the stunning now inside as they try and get pressure on the quarterback. You'll see it here as Rulon Jones waits for Simon Fletcher to clear and then breaks to the outside. Now the punt by Landetta. Is it down? No, he was in the end zone when he touched the ball as the ruling. So it'll come out to the 20-yard line. Last year, the rookie, it was the first man down again, and a flag is also down. Well, if that penalty is against the coverage team, then they will probably refuse it. Illegal member of the kicking team is downfield. Number 22, penalty is declined. It's first down. Tom Dooley, the referee, and the ball touched in the end zone. Gives it to there's Lee Rusan against whom uh, the call went. And here's the end of the play. Now he can jump into that end zone and kick the ball back, but I think what they said he'd already stepped into the end zone. So it wasn't a question of whether his feet had come down yet. Now, now they're saying someone moved. Was he in a three-point stance? If he's gone to a three-point stance, Stuttered is not allowed to lift that hand. <laughs> Giants claiming he was down on the three-point stance. The official asking at this point. Of course, this is something that's not subject to the review of the replay officials, but the ball is already at the 15-yard line. Who moved it there? It's already been done. Disregard the flag. There is no foul. Well, I think he may have gotten away with one. I think his hand was down, and he lifted up. And, of course, if he does that, it's an automatic penalty. But you can't call what you didn't see on it. And of course, if you're in a three or two point stance, if you're in the two point stance, you are allowed to move, and it's legal. You see the final seconds remaining in the third quarter 13 to 9, the Giants lead. First down from the 20. Lack, oh, check that winder into the arms of Big Jim Bird at the 22 yard line. And that probably the last play of the quarter. Now, if the Giants had reacted and made contact, then maybe they would have gotten the five yards. Reacting to his movement. But if they're a little bit late, then they would be called for encroachment. It's uh, a lot of different things that can handle happen in that situation. 
So through three quarters this afternoon, neither team able to get that offensive touchdown. It's 13-9 Giants. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. John Elway's passing keeps the Broncos ahead in that department by over 100 yards, total yards. But it's the pass interception by defensive lineman George Martin that's the difference, 13-9 as we open the fourth quarter. Elway going long to Mobley. And Kennard did a good job of just getting in the area and forcing Mobley to make a little quicker cut than he wanted. Elway... Still in the third quarter, Chicago actually getting a safety and Gentry recovering a block punt in the end zone. Cincinnati by four. Cleveland by seven. In the fourth quarter, other fourth quarter scores. New England's lead to cut to nine. Houston big. Detroit by two touchdowns. We welcome those of you who've been watching Houston and Indianapolis. We understand there have been some technical difficulties. Dick Emberg and Merlin Olsen in Giants Stadium. This is the third down play for John Elway and the Broncos. They trail the Giants, and Elway goes down at the 18. Greg Lasker, number 46. Lasker had come blitzing in from the outside. Elway could not find the open receiver. Tried to dog it up inside, as he has done so many times today. You mentioned earlier he's still the leading re the leading rusher for this Bronco team today, but no yardage there. They'll have to kick it away. Was not in my viewfinder. Chris Norman. Two fairly short kicks in his two attempts in the first half. Phil McConkey at the Giant. 45, 10 men on the line of scrimmage. And a soft kick off to the right. McConkey, fair catch at the 43 of Denver. So the problems for Chris Norman continue. 14 minutes plus remaining. And it's the Giants 13-9. Giant Stadium today's game is brought to you by the heartbeat of America today's Chevrolet by Budweiser Beachwood age for that clean crisp taste this buds for you and by GMAC the financial services people from General Motors short 24 yard punt by Chris Norman and the Giants start from the Denver 43 with a 13 to 9 lead Sims play action. Sidewinds it to Morris, and Hundley able to bring him down by an ankle at the 39, a gain of four. Good, strong play by Ricky Hundley, as Sims had a long time. Well, you don't want to see a quarterback stand there that long and let those receivers run. Secondary mostly in man-to-man -man for the Broncos. The reason for that is that they want to keep those safeties free to come up into the running game. So they're putting a lot of pressure on their cornerbacks and on their linebackers, usually covering man-to-man -to -man today. Second and six, Johnson in motion. Sims again, incomplete and almost intercepted as Carthen, as he went down, the ball plopping up almost to Tony Lilly's grasp, and he was headed the other way. I think that ball may have touched the ground, so it might not have been an interception. Let's look at the end of it. You watch that ball go down. Does it touch the ground? I believe it did. I believe it popped off the ground, but not, not able to see it from there. That's one we would have had to look at from several angles. Third down. What a big play here. Bronco defense trying to shut down a good opportunity for Sims to get some cushion on the board. Giants are two of ten. They were the first two third downs of the game for them. They make this one Phil McConkey. Mike Harden with a tackle. First down at the 31. I think we shouldn't have been surprised to see the low scoring nature of this game and we set the battle that way initially neither of these teams 
has let an opponent score more than 20 points except for the one game that the Jets put 22 on the board against the Broncos here in the Meadowlands, except for the opening games of the season. Joe Morris rattles off an eight-yard gain, and he has now moved into the top six rushers all-time in Giants history. Alex Webster, that big horse of a fullback for the Giants. Ron Johnson, who had two 1,000-yard rushing seasons, but they were not successive. Morris is the only one to do that in Giant history. Frank Gifford, third. Doug Kotar, fourth. Eddie Price, Joe Morris. Sure, Frank down in Miami appreciates uh, the remembrance. Nice thing about records that allows us to stir up memories of those stars of the past. Maurice Carthen appears to have a first down at the Denver 20-yard line. Some of those names remind me of the only other season in which the Giants have gotten off to this good a start. 1962, they went 12 and 2, went on to lose the championship game. You were a rookie that year. I was a rookie, my first year. There are some of those names. Of course, Gifford was a part of that team, the great Y.A. Tittle. I played against Jack Stroud. We didn't lose to them that year. You didn't. I we mean, didn't. lost to everybody. Well, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't play them in the regular season. We lost to them in the preseason, so we weren't part of that record. Leading 13 to 9. Sims looking for six. Flag down, and what a remarkable play by Harden, the corner man from Michigan, turning just in time to deflect that pass. Now we'll check the yellow flag. Official talking to Bavaro, who is blocking one on one on Mecklenburg on that play. And let's see what happened. Look at number 89, Mark Bavaro, the second year tight end. Well, I tell you, that's a battle of a couple of horses. You talk about physical players, quickness. Mecklenburg could be a tight end. Illegal use of hands, 89 offense, first down. Here's Bavaro, 89. I'm watching Mecklenburg trying to go inside on him, off very quickly. And Mecklenburg's game is a speed game. Watch Bavaro here go to the back of the legs and just drag him down. That's a little bit illegal. Well, you can't you can't criticize a kid for trying. And he wasn't really hooking him. He just tackled him. First and 20 from the 30. Morris, five, eight yards as he approaches the 100-yard mark. Jim Ryan, number 50, gets a call. Let's go back to that matchup, Bavaro and Mecklenburg. I asked Mecklenburg, do you like to play on artificial turf? He said, I'm better on artificial turf because it's a game of quickness on artificial turf. Well, he didn't get much done on that play except to close it off from the outside, but somebody has got to make that play inside. Broncos, I think, thinking pass, crossed up as the Giants ran the football. Long yardage here. Let's see if they do go to the pass. Second and 12 and a half. Fake to Morris. And no one even in the area as Rulon Jones came in on Sims. And no flag. So Either late way. that I don't think Rulon was trying to get him. I think he may have been pushed in there at the last second. Although Rulon is a wild pass rusher, he's not the kind of guy that very often is called for a late hit on the quarterback. Maybe we can see what happened. The official who watched it all the way did not throw the flag, so it must have been something other than what it seemed from here. You're looking at number two in the league in sacks. Rulon Jones with 13 and a half. Lawrence Taylor is first 16 and a half. There's the end of that play. Let's see if we can see what happened to Rulon Jones. He's not even in the picture yet. Well. They're lined up. We better go down yeah, to the line back. That was him going over the top. All right. Third and 13. Sims double pumps in the grasp and bowed down with a sack. And I believe that's the first of the day. Simon Fletcher gets the first Denver sack of the afternoon. We talked about the offensive line of the Denver Broncos playing with some injuries. We certainly better give some credit to that big front line of the New York Giants for protecting Sims so well on the day. Although the running game has also helped in that department. Sims trying to pull it down there. Pumps twice. Well, you don't usually get three opportunities in this league. And they said he was down at that point. 47-yard attempt by 
Raul Alegre. He's hit one from 45 his last time and earlier from 31. The Giants lead by seven. Alegre continues his excellent field goal kicking three for three today and with 10 7 left it's 16 to 9 New York. Ten minutes and seven seconds remaining in the fourth quarter Elway and Sims the two quarterbacks they were the marked men by these two defenses who have held both in check although Elway has better passing yardage. Gene Lang high stepping out to the 34 yard line good return by the former LSU runner Terry Kennard made the tackle number 43. Of course that big turnover touchdown which still marks the exact difference in this game but that difference only one big play away for Elway and you better believe that the Giants and their defense in particular well aware of that. Bob Lilly and George Martin were at one time tied with four defensive touchdowns now Martin uh, racing the all pro cowboy off the list six defensive touchdowns plus another as a tight end. Eludes Martin that time. Carl Banks throws up a roadblock at the 40 yard line. Seven yard game. Battle inside on the nose. Billy Bryant, the center, is going to work on Jim Burt. Now watch Burt working back to the inside. Bryant will lock up to him right here. And as Burt tries to get by, Take it back. He comes over, taps him. As Burt tries to get by there, he'll push him to the ground and take him down. That's Freeman. Mike Freeman, 64, rather than Bryant, 54. Elway taking advantage of his great quickness as he gets outside. Elway's 48 yards rushing, the top total for a Denver player. Winder has only 18. Second and three. Winder's turn. Good open field tackle by Perry Williams, the right cornerback from North Carolina State. He makes his home in Hamlet, North Carolina. That just conjures up an image, doesn't it? Down in Hamlet. Going to be close to a first down. And apparently they will measure. Denver, if it is a third down, is 6 of 13 today. Bill Parcells' Giants have had a lesser percentage, despite the fact they started out 2 for 2, plus a fourth down conversion on the opening drive of the game. Dick, I think I may have said that 64 was not Billy Bryant. Of course, 64 is Billy Bryant. I better get that in here as you look at the shortage. We've got two marked that way today. One earlier one. And of course, the Giants elected to go for it on a little razzle dazzle. So that was that fourth down play where they sent Landetta the putter in motion and ran for the first down. Reminder coming up with this uh, big Thanksgiving holiday ahead the Skins game. Oh, how that's grown tremendous popularity in such a short amount of time. The players are Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, Fuzzy Zeller, and Lee Trevino. With that money building up in every hole, 3.30 on Saturday for the 1986 edition. We hope you join us here on NBC Sports. Third and about two inches to go. The Giants really punch it in close. Shoulder to shoulder. No way. Just wedging ahead. And has the first down easily. It's not a good statistic, but Elway has matched his career high in rushing in a game, 49 yards. Make that 50. This is his best. Elway saying, come on, get those plays into me. Mike Shanahan will 
send him down and he signaled out. Dan Reeves also, of course, calling the plays. And he is talking to Shanahan, who's upstairs, to relay information to him. But they usually have their plays on that sheet in his hand. Elway drilling it to Gerald Wilhite, who slides out of bounds at the 42. He's football's answer to Lonnie Smith. He just has <laughs> trouble. <laughs> Staying on his feet. He's got great speed and a former gymnast. And even on that touchdown last week of 70, there were a couple times he admitted he thought he was going down. Will Hyde, who leads the Broncos in pass receptions with 39 catches coming in, has positioned them at the 42 with the first down. Reeves has made his decision. The play has gone into Elway. And Elway apparently concerned about the time. and. Oh, you don't want to give up those timeouts. Eight seconds on the clock. Elway didn't feel he had time to get it going. And Reeves is most unhappy that they've used one of those three precious timeouts. Giants lead by seven. First down, Denver. At the Giant 42 with eight and a half minutes remaining. Screen. And Wilhite dropped. After about a yard gain, maybe two, just spending on the spot. Let's look at what uh, this will complete three quarters of the season, four games to go. The Broncos combined record of opponents 28 and 16 at home against Cincinnati, at Kansas City, home against the Redskins. What a game that'll be. Then at Seattle, we'll have that one on the final Saturday of the season. The playoff picture looks this way. These are the best records. The Raiders, by winning on Thursday night, are a game and a half behind Denver. So if Denver should lose, they have only a game lead on the Raiders, and Dan Reeves talked about that yesterday, although they've beaten the Raiders both times, so it's more than a one-game lead. Down the middle, open, and it's intercepted. Kennard, and Mobley makes the tackle at the 30-yard line. So Mobley was wide open, but Elway overshot the mark. Probably Terry Kennard would certainly be pronounced an all pro on the season if he could always get that ball in his hands and catch it. He's dropped a lot of opportunities on the year, but he did not drop that one. Boy, the center fielder loves to see that one coming down the middle. Fourth interception of the year. First down Giants at their own 30. And they give it to Joe Morris. And he has a first down. Out of bounds at the 44. Elway, such a competitive quarterback. The minute that ball left his hands, I think he knew it was going to be at least touched by the defense, but didn't know whether it would be intercepted until you get the feeling there. And oh, he hates that. Every quarterback does, but I think the competitive one's the worst. Again, the drought continues. Only two touchdowns in the last six games. Two interceptions today, and one went for a touchdown the other way. George Martin, 78 yards. Sims. And down he goes. Carl Mecklenburg's first sack of the game is eight and a half on the year. Other scores as we're close to the final gun and some of the other action. Bears see Green Bay kick a field goal by Del Greco. Cincinnati hanging on to the four point lead and boy Pittsburgh is uh, improving here in the second half of the year giving Cleveland trouble first final down on the bottom Detroit beats Tampa Bay 38 17 Houston apparent winner. And Buffalo making things tight at Foxborough, 15 to 12, New England. 11 yard loss on Mecklenburg stack of Sims. Second and 21. Joe Morris hit in the backfield. Knifing through was Freddie Gilbert. And this young man who played three years with the New Jersey Generals in the USFL on this home field. He's becoming more and more prominent in that Denver defense. Second time we've seen him make big plays where he's broken clean on the inside and been able to take the runner right off his feet. You still see Elway pacing that sideline frustrated. Well, defense playing well enough now to give him another opportunity. And we said it. He's only one play away. But right now, 
New York would like to keep this drive alive with a third and miles. 24. Wide open. Galbraith. And he's wrestled down by Ken Woodard. Tony Galbraith gets seven yards. His first catch today, 25th of the year. He started the season with 431 more than any NFL running back in history. You wonder why they throw that kind of pass. Well, Bill Parcells, again, we said is a conservative coach. He knows he has a, a defense that's not allowed a touchdown on the day. He's putting the pressure on them right now. He's getting a little yardage to, from which to punt. He's saying put it out inside of their 20, and then let's let our defense go to work. Huge difference between Landetta's punting for the Giants and Norman's rather soft kicking for Denver. They'll let that clock run down. It's down to 5.40. Only eight seconds now on the 32nd clock. So they're going to spend all the time they can. Three. Now it goes. Two seconds. Wobbly boot, but a long one. Will hide at the 17 and out to the 27-yard line, a 10-yard return. Even when Landetta doesn't hit it cleanly with a perfect spiral, he drives the ball 46 yards. A reminder to our viewers, we'll be selecting our Budweiser Most Valuable Player at the conclusion of today's game. Let's take a look at the Giants' remaining four. <laughs> at San Francisco, at Washington, then they finish at home with two teams they figure to beat, St. Louis and Green Bay. Those teams are at opposite ends of the spectrum, the first two and the last two. That's the NFC picture. Big battle will be between Dallas and whichever team finishes second in the West. Rams or 49ers, or even New Orleans now. Elway gets away from Taylor and steps out of bounds at the 29. Boy, that was an exciting duel. You saw Lawrence Taylor right where he wants the quarterback, and Lawrence talking to himself. I had him, but Elway able to kick free and scrambles for three more. Taylor, such a powerful man. He does not miss many tackles like this, unless he's trying to hurt somebody. And he wasn't trying to hurt Elway. He's just trying to get him down on that particular play. But that's the second time today that Elway has run out of his grasp and managed to, on the last time, to make a first down on this just to make a couple of yards. Actually, they say technically or officially only one yard, although it's about a yard and a half. Here comes Taylor again, the throw underneath to Wilhite, who has a first down at the 39. Gary Reasons from Northwest Louisiana State, the tackler. And Wilhite limping as he gets up. You might wonder why Elway is not getting the ball deeper downfield. The Giants usually keep two safeties deep or at least have two men deep at all times and that makes it tough to head down the middle. It's easier to work the corners on them to work the outs on them. They usually end up with at least one safety and very often two safeties deep. Ooh. Winder paying the price about 10 yards. Reasons and Williams make the tackle, and Winder not getting up. He really got sandwiched on that hit and was in a position where had to absorb the entire blow, and that's the penalty of having your back to the defense looking to the quarterback. And the way they rushed out there makes you a bit concerned. Winder with the ball here. Again, the hit from one side and the other. And Williams actually in his tackle going right up through the face mask. It appeared that Winder may have been unconscious before he hit the ground. It hard to understand why he did not let go of that football, but he did not. They're motioning, I think, for quickly for someone to come, and I would expect that they would have doctors from both sides of the field and perhaps a stabilizing board out there shortly. No, he's easing up. He's sitting up. That's a good sign. Checking a feeling in his hands and what has become unfortunately an all too familiar sight of late. That's a good sign. He apparently is up and talking. You see the shot and it was a tough one but Winder is on his feet. Yeah. Hmm. People often ask me, Dick, are you sorry you're not down there on the field? No, I'm glad I'm up here in the booth. 
Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. This is WNBC TV, New York. Look at Winder. I want to ask you a question about the face mask and the helmet itself, Merlin, after this play. Second down and in inches. Watson in motion at the Denver 49. Play action. Elway down the middle. Wide open is Watson. First down at the 25 yard line. Terry Kennard made the tackle, and the Broncos down by seven are driving deep. Here's the man that Watson is ultimately going to beat. He'll, you'll see him go out of your picture, and Watson will come down and cut to the inside. He'll have room inside here as he gets down. They've driven the safeties off. Again, the safety's saying, we don't want to be beaten deep. But what they did here is to leave enough room for Elway to get it over the linebackers. And the safety way back. That's Kennard, 43. And Watson makes that big grab on the 25, 25 and a half yard line. Three minutes and 14 seconds remaining. 16 to 9, the Giants lead. Elway and the Broncos looking for a tying score. Incomplete and no flag. Lawrence Taylor call. saying he intentionally down the ball. Interesting call as Elway started to throw. Looked like he kind of half let that ball go. A quarterback has to be a good actor to avoid those intentional grounding calls. Here it is 16 to 9. As you check other action. Second and 10 at the Giant 25 yard line. Winder, blow to the head. It is not serious as the report from downstairs. Lang has replaced him. Low height to the 19, a gain of six. Carl Banks made the tackle. Third and four. 253 left. Interesting to anticipate. What happens, Dick, if they don't get the first down here with 247, 246 on the clock? In a day when you haven't had that many shots at the giant end zone, would you go for it on fourth down? Giants are certainly familiar with this situation. Nine of their 11 games have been played touchdown or less. Let's see if Elway ends up running on this play. No, he throws to Wilhite, who is open. And Wilhite takes it. To the nine yard line. First and goal, Denver. Byron Hunt ran him out of bounds, and a perfect throw by Elway was right in line with us, Merlin. Just led Will Height. Didn't have to break stride a bit. Didn't have to move his hands very far as you watch him now drop back. They're coming with it. all kinds of pressure. You see Martin coming inside. Elway gets that out of there quickly. Byron Hunt, number 57, the linebacker, trying to get out to get his coverage on Will Height. But the ball is on the nine-yard line. First and goal to go. Nine yards away from tying it up. 2.19 left. There's Will Height. Stumbling, falling, crawling. Let's see where they spot the ball. I think he'll get all of that because no one touched him. I, very often on the artificial turf, if you run with your feet low to the turf, you catch that turf with your feet coming forward. And I think that's what Will Height did. He ended up literally crawling, which is legal as long as he has not been touched. Now well, you watch him again. They allow the game to the four, and that is the two-minute timeout at Giant Stadium where the drama builds. The Giants sitting on a seven-point lead. A key defensive player on the sidelines for the Giants, Jim Burt. Jerome, Jerome Sally has number replaced 70. him. Eight in there. It's second and goal, four-yard line. There's Sally, who is replacing Burt. Sally's from the University of Missouri. Two minutes left. It looked to me like Burt may have strained his back earlier in the game. He was helped off the field once, came back in but maybe having some back spasms or problems. It looked like he was in pain on the sideline. Look at Elway's numbers. 305 yards and yet no touchdowns. Two interceptions. One of those, the difference in the game, 78 yards. Those are the hands of Bill Parcells as he watches the Broncos set up four yards away from a tie. Down. 
knocked out just a couple of minutes ago. Winder comes back in and scores behind Will Height's block to make it 16-15. Well, they ask him a lot of questions on the sideline. He must have given them the right answers. And in so many situations today, the Broncos have not been able to run the ball effectively. They finally get it down to the goal line, and I'm sure caught that New York Giant defense thinking they're going to throw the ball twice. They ran it, successful both times. They get the touchdown, and now the crucial extra point. Carlos is 33 for 34 this year. And that one ties it at 16. 155 left. Running to his right, Winder has everyone out in front of him, getting a good block from the tight end and moved over to that side. Clarence K. There's Will Height with the final block as he's able to spring him open. That's Terry Kennard, 43, that Will Height was able to lock up on. And Winder just dipped up inside of that marker and out of the end zone. 73 yards in nine plays. That was the sustained drive of the entire game. And the only touchdown scored by either offense on the day. So it'll be up to Phil Sims. He has all three timeouts left and a minute 55 to get the Giants at least into field goal range. Allegre has shown a length of leg. He has kicked one from 45 and 46 yards, which means that the Giants' target is the Denver 30 or thereabouts. The way Allegra's kicking the 35. Elway on that drive was 5 for 6 passing and 63 yards. Well, and you, you understand now why Elway is picked so high in the polls when they're talking about quarterbacks. Carlos. To McConkey at the seven. He bolts to the 28-yard line. And here comes the giant offense. This big sellout crowd of 76,000 cheering Sims, who has all of his cards left. All the timeouts. A minute and 50 on the clock as we go back to look at Certainly the most important play of the game for the Denver Bronco offense as they slide it into the end zone. And now the ball is back in New York's court. Mecklenburg forces the incomplete pass. In fact, that's a lineman out there closest to the ball, Billy Ard, 67. Someone had knocked Tony Galbraith down. That was a screen pass, and Galbraith had been knocked onto the ground. There was no one there to receive it. Well, it's got to look like it's a long ways into that end zone for Sims as he sits that ball down and looks at it on the 29-yard line. 71 yards of green. makes the play again he's been naughty as far as that giant line is concerned he's in the cookie jar again third sack of the day as the Denver defense coming not playing a passive role here at all Joe Collier says we're gonna go after you Bill, Brad Benson tackling him couldn't keep him away and with it a timeout with 135 left our producer Larry Cirillo, our director Ted Nathanson, remind us that this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New York Giants and the National Football League is prohibited. That last time out was taken by Denver after the sack. So with third down and 21, the Broncos hoping they can stop the Giants here and get the ball back themselves with plenty of time. 135 left. Sims goes deep down the middle to Johnson. And a first down at the 41-yard line. Deja vu. It was Sims to Johnson on fourth down last week at Minnesota that sent them into a field goal that beat the Vikings. No huddle. And quickly, Sims is upfield. He needs to get it down to about the 30-yard line. Galbraith 
to the 48-yard line. And a flag is down. Clock shows 103, and it's still running. Oh, that is not a flag. Someone threw an orange out there. Looks like a yellow flag. That's the Giants' first time out. There it is. Well, yuck. <laughs> well, I know a lot of players feel the same, uh, get the same reaction as seeing that man throw the yellow flag, the real thing. Parcells, I'm sure, just calming Sims down on the sideline, had an interesting conversation with him. He said, you know, that last week before the game against the Vikings, he said, you have been successful because of your daring and your aggressiveness. And he said, I think you've kind of pulled back in. He said, go back out there and scare those cornerbacks and those deep, uh, deep backs. He said, make them stay awake the night we play against them or the night before we play against them. Well, Sims did it last week. He's thrown some excellent passes today, although he has not been as solid here in the early parts of this game as he was against the Vikings. That pass last week came on fourth down with the Giants facing defeat 20 to 19 against the Vikings. And that extended the drive, and Sims eventually got him in position for the field goal by Allegre. Dick, one of the areas that has not been even so far in this game is first downs. The Broncos with 24, and with that first down, the Giants now have 13. Yardage much more even, but more control at least of that statistic by the Broncos. Giants have two timeouts left. You see just a little over a minute remaining. The ball is at the New York 49. Flag down. Galbraith hit at the 44 of Denver. Clock stops with 57 seconds. Holding Giants. So instead of the ball in Denver territory, Bill Parcells will see the officials mark it back to the New York 39. 63 offense. Second down. Nelson gets the call. When we talked about what happened last week, Merlin, here it is. Fourth and 17 yards to go. Jackson out. The rush is on, and Sims throws what has been called now the pass. Just as they used to talk about the fumble, they raved about it all week, and you can see why. A great pass to keep that drive alive. Second down and 12. Deep down the middle. McConkey to the 15. yards to McConkie. Well, Raul Allegre had a chance last week. He won the game for his team. He said he hadn't won a game since he finally got a, a chance at Indianapolis to kick an extra point, but that's unforgivable for the defense. Steve Wilson and Tony Lilly, the two closest men, McConkie splitting that zone. You can't let that deep receiver open when they've got that much space. And, of course, Raul Allegre now saying, Wow, two weeks, I got, I got another chance here to, to have my team win a game. One of the reasons that play was so wide open, Dennis Smith, the safety, was in on a safety blitz. You saw he was the man that was toppled high in the air by a blocker around Sims. Tony that, Galbraith. That Tony opened Galbraith it up. knocked him down. They had to blitz on. They did, and committing a man that way, obviously you expect single coverage downfield, but no one on McConkey as he found an open spot. There goes McConkey, and there are the two defenders. Well, that's the kind you, you weep over on the way home. Ball is at the 16-yard line with 28 seconds left, and this is a matter of the Giants just setting up the field goal of Allegre, not taking any chances. Let the clock wind down so Denver has no chance if Allegre should miss. And in a game turned early by a single play, an interception, and a touchdown, what appeared to be a certain overtime situation may end up in a giant victory. And Sam's just getting the ball in the middle of the field, and now they'll let the clock run down. Now we get official word. The pass to McConkey was good for 46, not 36 yards. So there have been two passes that Giant fans will well remember. And how about the Giants and their 
penchant for the close game. Five games ago, they lost to Seattle at Seattle by five. Then they beat Washington by seven, beat Dallas by three, beat Philadelphia by three, rallied to beat Minnesota by two, and here they are tied with 17 seconds today. Joe Collier not talking about how to stop Allegre, more reflecting on why we didn't stop McConkey. This was the last giant timeout. So, according to the scoreboard, was the last. But here's Sims back in. So maybe uh, that is not the case. They've already set it up right in the center of the field. It's at the 15. So that will be about a 38 yard field goal. make that 33 and Allegre has hit from 31 45 and 46 a perfect three for three today so apparently they have one timeout remaining because Sims will use that right here if needed unless Denver is going to call it. Ricky Hundley coming out of that stack with the football and Official saying the ball had been blown dead, and finally the timeout. They spot the ball a yard loss on the play back to the 17 yard line. Figure eight yards. Most of them line up eight yards, not seven anymore. That would make uh, 17, 8, 25, 35, might be just under 35 yards. And uh, the pressure now all on the back of the former University of Texas kicker, Raul. Allegre. Now, if the Giants were to make a mistake, a, a bobbled snap, for example, they would not have a timeout here to stop the clock. So uh, if this kick goes off as expected and is successful, they will feel that they did the right thing. But if they were able to bobble it, they would have another down, but no timeout to stop the clock. Well, he was the star last week at Minnesota, and they put him stage center with a key light here in the Big Apple again today. today little Raul Allegre's four field goals and big George Martin's 78 yard rumble that's been the offense and the Giants lead 19 16 with six seconds left and the harsh reality is you'll take them any way you can get them and mark them in the L column our thanks to Constanza's core helping the booth Messrs Miller Sarkuski Zipkowski McLaughlin Myron Hester and Blackmore. George Martin. Oh my, he is our most valuable player, sponsored by Budweiser. It was his 78 yard touchdown run with an interception, making a marvelous one handed catch and then racing down the far sidelines. That is the difference in the game today. Four field goals and Martin's touchdown. Congratulations from Budweiser. The contribution to the United Way on behalf of all of the MVPs around the National Football League made by Budweiser in honor of their performances. And every bit as hard-nosed a game as we expected, dominated by the two defenses, but the critical errors were the difference. And <laughs> That's usually reserved for Parcells at treatment. Four seconds left. Broncos do not try 
to run the ball. They get the ball down on change of possession. Jim Ryan receiving that bounding kick. And it's a uh, one last shot. Well, we were at uh, we learned. Anaheim Stadium. It's never over until it's the last. It's never one. over until it's over. And of course, what you have to hope for here is perhaps an interference call deep enough down the field that it keeps the play from ending, the game from ending. So a final desperation shot for Elway. Well, He's got he a strong arm. I'm not sure he can throw it 80 yards. So. Perry, Perry Williams, about 30 yards downfield. Elway will put it up. Now that won't get the job done. Sampson. Sampson is trying to get yardage for the field goal, but the game is over. They're out of time. New York Giants win it 19 to 16. So the Giants assure themselves at least a tie atop the NFC East. And pressure now on Denver. Their lead down to one over the Raiders.